Hello there YouTube! Please like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We've got a live salary cap slash auction draft up next on a Kokomo Friday. Alcantara, Soroka, you look so good in Boca. Peralta, Manoa, Balzac, Ferrer, Nola, Gilito, Castillo, Yoshida, Mosu, Sikta, Gano, and Fado. Now you're so high, but it ain't be so low. Frank Clubs, hit some kind of show. Now let's get on with the show. Happy Kokomo Friday and welcome in to Fantasy Baseball Today. Frank Sample joined by Scott White and Chris Towers, the happiest of Kokomo Fridays. We've got a long one for you today. We're doing a live salary cap slash auction draft and we are broadcasting the entire thing. So if you're hanging out watching us live on YouTube, feel free to go to the bathroom, go eat dinner. Go to the bar, come back. We'll probably still be here broadcasting. So. Even the reserve rounds? Are go, we doing the reserve rounds live? The Lord of the Rings extended editions, and we will likely still be here. Ugh. At least one of them. Probably not all three. I didn't. Chris, how you doing, bud? Good. I made the mistake of like working straight until 6.15 and then realized, oh, crap, we have a draft in 45 minutes. I haven't eaten. <laughs> so I decided I, I got wings. Which, like, that's probably the worst choice I could have made Very of nice. any food to just, like, shove in my mouth five minutes before going on air for really, four really hours. Really poor choice. Man, nope, not not my choice. best. I'm going to, if you hear some, like, crunching sound, that's probably just me chopping on Tums to try to get through this. <laughs> yeah, not the best. Scott, you ready to draft? I am. I am. Uh, I would have liked a little more time to prepare. I thought I'd have an hour. I took half an hour. So I got a little I got a little budget made out here for me to work off of. I'm I'm hoping to it's so I was looking through the history of this league. I pretty consistently finish in the top four. Very consistent about that. There were a couple years I didn't, but top four usually there. I haven't actually won since 2016 though. And I don't know if you know a little something that happened around 2016 that might have changed the way we play fantasy baseball. Um, um the JBE. I turned I turned 28. The JBE oh, Juice Ball okay. era is what I'm talking about. And so hopefully now that we're out of it, I can I can get I can get back in a more in more in a groove in, into more of a groove here and win this thing again. Let's see. All right, so here's what you need to know about this draft. Again, it's salary cap, also known as auction. 12-team, 5x5 five five roto with a $260 budget. Standard categories, roto-style lineups, two catchers, one of each infield position, five outfielders, one corner, one middle, one utility, and nine pitcher spots. We've got some great players in here as well, including... Greg Lathrop, we got to give a shout out. Back to back champion, I believe. Back to back champion, right? Is yep, back to back mm -hmm. and three of four. Maybe, maybe he's maybe he's the common denominator. He joined the league and I couldn't win anymore. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why are we even here? We should just have get Greg Lathrop on here, like, <laughs> hosting, giving out his strategy because clearly he's been doing a better job than us. Yeah. All right, Scott. Well, whenever you're ready, you are the commissioner of this. Okay. Bad Fire it up. Let's get it going. All right. I don't know who's nominating first, but I'm hitting the resume button. And I know we get lots of questions this time of year about strategy in a format like this, nomination strategy, uh, your your bidding strategy, and we'll talk it out throughout the draft. But next week, this is kind of breaking news to Scott and Chris as well. We're going to do a little bit of a strategy week. So I'm going to have different segments for each day where we break down our strategy for those specific formats. So in case that's what you've been wondering, we'll have that content for you next week. And it appears that we are about to have our first time out here. <laughs> We're off to a great start. Hang on. Where is Daniel? All right. He's here. He's here. We're going to get going here. Now he's Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge is the Aaron first Judge. one up. And I, I shut off the sound this time, thankfully. Hopefully, I think I did. Let me know in the YouTube chat if, you hear, if you're hearing weird random sounds. But uh, Aaron Judge is up, and he's already up to $36. I have a feeling this guy's going to go for quite a bit, as he should, obviously. I'm looking. I've got our our values up right now to see how much he should go for. Um, he's already exceeded that. So 
43 dollars and counting for aaron judge yeah actually one thing that that we haven't mentioned but it's pretty interesting is if you play in a cbs league there is now a consensus ranking uh on our site that includes consensus salary cap values so very nice and i fun. think People could find those within their league, right, Chris? So if you I believe so. Hover over players in your home league in your homepage, then you can click on rankings and you'll see those consensus ranks. And our first player is won by whom? Scotty Dub. All right. Dollars. I'm already feeling Aaron like Dug. maybe I have my mojo back because I, I'd been I'd been playing a little scared. I think the past two years and and backing down when it uh, when a player went past the value I had prescribed for him. So, um, you know, I, I, I believe in getting high end players in a 12 team league and Aaron judge was one I specifically targeted to give me hopefully a really big home run advantage, uh, to start my team I and fill an outfield spot. <laughs> so Bobby Witt is up and he is now going for $36. I'm going to have the most boring, like 12 to $15 team of all time. If players are going to be going for values like this. Uh, yeah, it's it's probably not going to work out very well for me. All right, and sold. Bobby Witt Jr. goes for thirty-seven dollars. So two players up so far. Aaron Judge for forty-eight. Bobby Witt for thirty-seven. I think there is something to talk about in terms of inflation within your draft, right, Chris? If you if you notice that the high-end players are all going for over value, then you know a there is going to be lesser values in the middle or, mm -hmm. or lower end players. And if you want one of those guys, you're also going to have to pay up. You can't just be so stringent in your values that I'm just not going to pay the price. Yep. It's a, it's a closed economy, or I don't know if that's actually a thing that people say, but <laughs> there is a finite amount of money available in any given uh, salary cap draft. And every dollar above you know, your projection that goes to Aaron Judge, that means there's one less dollar for the remaining 275 players who will be bid on. So it's something to keep in mind. Yeah, you have to you have to be willing to adjust as the, the draft goes on. And so far, every player, has, I mean, it's only three, but every player has gone for more than I have budgeted oh. for. Uh, and that's what we saw in the uh, actually head, I had, head points draft. Michael Harris we did just last went time. for less than. Not Michael Harris just went for less than I haven't budgeted for. I've gone for 22. 28 yeah. versus Bobby Witt's 37. Um, I'm not so sure I want to just have, rather have Michael Harris. I think it's closer than a lot of people think. And certainly the $7 difference there, I would have rather had Harris. And so B-Don won both Witt and Harris. He's got a nice stolen base cushion, already filled third base in an outfield spot. So he should be feeling pretty good right about now. Yeah, lots of power and speed from both of those guys, Bobby Witt and Michael Harris. Jacob DeGrom is currently up and up to $29 so far for Jacob DeGrom. And will he stop there? It seems like, no, he will not. He is up to 30 bucks, 31 yeah, This is another one going right past mine. So I don't know. 22 is all you have Harris for, huh, Chris? Where do you have him ranked in Roto <laughs> overall? I have him 36 overall. Okay, I see him like a late third rounder. And so you're you're especially low on him then, which is yes. Fun. Um yeah, and I think I also eh, no, not not really in in my road. In my points league values, I do have pretty aggressive valuations on the top players. My road values top out at about 44, and my top 5 are all 44 or 43. Uh, all right, let's see what we've got here. Javier Bias <laughs> out there for two dollars. It's an yeah. interesting strategy to throw mid-tier players out early when there's a lot of money on the board, just to kind of get a feel for how much they're going to go for. I mean, sometimes yeah. you do that and, and they'll go for way over budget. I mean, right now, this seems pretty cheap for. Uh, it's pretty good. So yeah, I did that. I would, you know, I'd like to throw out a tester. Normally, it's a player I don't really want but i wouldn't mind winning for a dollar if everybody just fell asleep at the wheel or something so i think Baez was a perfect choice for that uh, he went for six i haven't budgeted for five so that tells me that uh people aren't going to dramatically overpay for those guys probably and that maybe i shouldn't keep throwing them out <laughs> as a result and it's worth mentioning that we are going to play this league out. I know I have it listed as a mock draft on YouTube. This is a real draft. We're playing this draft out, so keep that in mind as well. Julio Rodriguez. Um, 
all right, not like I wrote him down for a certain dollar value, and he's up to forty six dollars. So I will not yeah. be getting Julio Rodriguez in line okay. with Judge at forty eight. I would yep. say, yep. Uh, and Bidon won him too. B so Bidon has Wit, Harris, and Rodriguez. He is uh, he's going studs and duds here, which I yeah. don't think is a bad idea. Yeah, Bidon has a hot date, so he's trying to get out of here. He's <laughs> let me spend my money. See, the problem is though that that actually he's going to have to be the last one here. Yeah, because he's, yeah, he's right. not going to be able to hammer that two dollar player at the end of the draft. Uh, yeah, and, and something I think is an interesting part of strategy with a league like this is is jump bids. So someone throws out Jordan Alvarez for one, two, three. All right, let's move it along here. So I jump him up to twenty five. Let's you know let's keep this moving a little bit. And Jordan Alvarez is is kind of a, a hot topic right now because he's dealing with the left hand soreness, and we haven't seen him in spring training yet. And he's up to forty dollars. So and no discount here. But I will say, Chris, compared to where the other early first round picks are going, like Aaron Judge went for 48. To get Alvarez at 40, it is a discount relative to other first round players, not a discount relative to where we have him ranked. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I, I moved him down to 10. So, you know, we talked about that on, on yesterday's show, I think, where I moved him down below Juan Soto and Kyle Tucker and Shohei Otani. He was in like the $37 range for me. Now he's 34. So it, it's... I think still we're still seeing the inflation for the elite players. Ronald Acuna is the next player up and uh, already up to 39. No surprise there. I believe Julio Rodriguez went for 40, 46 and Aaron judge went for 48. So I imagine Acuna will wind up somewhere around there. Ah, Chris, you're in on the action. Oh, yeah. All right. So he's at judges value now with Chris 48. as the leading bidder mm. surpasses him up to 50 oh. now. Oof. Acuna is the favorite for this draft so far. Going once, going twice. Chris has his limits. Old. Ronald Raymond Acuna. Atherton gets Ronald Acuna, which is fitting because I think he likes to put the Enya a little tilde over his <laughs> in and his name Raymond Atherton on Twitter. All uh, right, so Ronald Acuna goes for fifty. He is the highest bought player so far, and. I don't know that anyone is going to beat that, to be honest. No, probably not. Well, I'm Grissom, another mid-tier player getting thrown out here. Javier Baez just went for $6 earlier. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm going to get in on the bidding for Vaughn Grissom. I have a certain amount of money budgeted for a middle infielder. And uh, he kind of meets hits that. And I don't know. I think there's probably going to be better values later. So Vaughn Grissom goes for $8 uh, once again to beat on. So, <laughs> uh, so he got Baez and Grissom. Yeah, so short stop middle infield. Middle infield. He has yep. Bobby Witt at third base, Harris and J Rod in the outfield. Yep, He's yep. Got a lot of steals already. Like he probably doesn't need to worry about those anymore. Right, and I am going to nominate uh, Shohei Otani here and see what he winds up going for. Another first round caliber player. Uh, this, of course, on CBS, Otani is one player you need to decide before the week starts whether you want him to be your utility position or you're in a starting pitcher spot. But you can use him in both. It's just you have to decide before the, before the week starts. All right. Bidding is out and running. $34. Chris seems to be in on the action here. All righty. 36 now for, for Otani. Bit of a value so far. Let's see what he winds up at. Yeah, and, and the thing about auction uh, salary cap leagues is, like, there's a lot of the uh, – intangible things going on where like so look i have adhd i have a really hard time sitting still and not participating and so i have a bad tendency of just like i haven't bought anyone in a while i'm gonna do it and i'm trying to i'm trying to be present and cognizant and aware and uh you know we'll see how that goes so well, that's money goes for 37 dollars three dollars less than Jordan alvarez i actually think that's a really good buy mm-hmm well, that, unless you consider Witt a first rounder, which nobody on on this podcast does, um, yes, then Otani's the cheapest first rounder so far at thirty seven. Now we have talked before about how he's a difficult fit, yes, uh, because in a conventional draft you take Otani in round one. That means you're not you're not getting an outfielder or a third baseman with your first two picks, and those are two critical positions to fill early instead so of filling DH. So no position at all. Of course, it's a little different in a salary cap draft because you could still jump in there for the third baseman or outfielder you want, theoretically. I think it is easier to 
build around Otani in a salary cap league because you do have more flexibility in the other high end players you surround him with. And, and I do think you probably want one of those other high end players along with him. CJ Crone goes for eight dollars once again to be on. So spending a lot early, but he's got his first baseman, a bunch of middle middle infielders so far as well. And I mean, he hasn't bought all expensive players. Crone was eight, Grissom was eight, Ayas was six. Let's talk about this one right now because this is really interesting. Carlos Rodon goes off the board at twenty six dollars. I don't know if uh, I don't know if Tim read the injury news on Carlos Rodon, but he was. I didn't see if that was a jump bid. I mean, I assume it was. Others were bidding too. It was a jump bid. Yeah. Okay. All All right. right. We'll keep going then. So I had I lowered him to about an eleven dollar player, thirtieth in my starting pitcher rankings. Carlos Rodon with this news. Mm-hmm. Um, yep, I've got him at a uh, 14, but I think I'm a little flatter in that range. So yeah, it's it's the yeah. same thing. So 26 is probably what I would have bought him for originally. It doesn't sound like a serious thing for what it's worth. I mean, forearm, I and mean, it's always kind of scary because a lot of times it's a precursor to Tommy John. But this they is a the muscle. ligaments. They're they're saying yeah, I mean they're saying there's no uh, you know nothing turned up with the UCL, and that seems fine. And, and they're talking about it maybe throwing within two weeks. So it, it may not be a big deal for Rodon, but um, just the nature of the injury makes everyone a little concerned, I think. Ah, so it turns out the gentleman who won Carlos Rodon says in the chat, no, I actually did not know that Carlos Rodon was hurt. Well, sorry, bud. Uh, you got to. Right. I mean, I would have backed that out if he had spoken up sooner. Yeah, $26 for Carlos Rodon. I have him for uh, 16 You guys mentioned a little bit lower than that. And uh, Jose Ramirez was the next player up after Carlos Rodon, he went for $50. So uh, Ramirez and Acuna tied for the highest bought player so far at $50. And then Luis Robert goes at 25. All right, Chris, you're up to nominate a player. It is my turn to nominate a player. Do you have a specific nomination strategy? Yeah, I tend to throw out uh, guys who I don't really want all that much. See if I can get some money off the board. Um, I throw out Dansby Swanson, who I think is fine. He's like my 60th ranked player, um, which is probably around where he's going. But I'm not particularly enthused about drafting him. Likewise. Yeah, we mentioned that recently on uh, Bus 2.0. Not exactly inspired by Swanson. Coming off a fantastic year, but, you know, moving over from the Braves to the Cubs. It's a big lineup downgrade. And he's... Going around, he goes, he goes in a spot similar to like O'Neill Cruz and Wander Franco and just other shortstops. Yeah, he goes ahead of Tim Anderson. I'd rather have Tim Anderson. Um, yeah. So Dansby Swanson winds up going for fourteen dollars, which seems like a couple dollars less than I have. I'm sixteen, so it's yeah. Yeah, I've got mid tier guys. Those mid tier guys are going for a little less than at least by my dollar amounts, and then the high end guys going for more predictably. Anthony Swanson, yep, I've got him for $16 as well, Scott. Uh, another fun one here, Tyler Glass now, who we know is going to miss some time as well at the beginning of the season, currently going for $9 to Greg Lathrop. And- yeah, I, I've still got Glass now inside of my top 170, but I think there's like, I had him as a bust before this. I just, I think there's a non-zero chance you end up getting nothing from him this year, unfortunately. I, I I hope not because he's a really fun player. He's really good. I think when he pitches, he'll be incredible, but I just don't have faith that he can hold up. Tyler Glass now, according to Scott's rankings, $9 player. I've got him at six. So he's right around. SP- yeah, I've got him at seven. Yeah, right around SP 45, I think, for all of us. Rafael Devers is currently out there going for 40 bucks. So one yeah. of those elite third basemen currently going for more than Otani, going for more than Bobby Witt. It's interesting. And that's where he settles. 40 bucks for Devers. Yeah, same as Jordan Alvarez. So I I think that's probably a bit too much for Rafael Devers, but I'm I'm also less invested in the positional scarcity. Uh narrative sounds flippant. And that's not what I mean to be, but you know. Well, if you subscribe to Scott's uh position scarcity theory this offseason, you've got Devers as like a borderline first round pick. So I mean if yeah. we're Dropping, I have them. If we're dropping Alvarez to the end of the first round, it's you know it, they're probably similarly ranked players for you. Yeah, I have him as a first rounder, and um, I was looking at him potentially getting him closer to thirty five though than forty. Mm-hmm. And it's 
you know, I, I don't think it's a bad idea to go the extra two dollar or two for the guy you want, especially in, you know, a tw- more of a 12 team league like this than, than a 15 teamer. You don't have to guard those dollars so closely. Ultimately, you you want the best build you can get. And sometimes there's a player that's perfectly suited for that. Um, when you start going five dollars beyond what you want to spend, uh, you know that that gets, that gets pretty scary. Corbin Burns went for thirty four dollars while we were talking, and again, relative to other first round picks or borderline first round picks, uh, I'm just gonna oh, get you up a little bit. I, I'm not gonna let it happen, Chris. It's just too cheap yeah. for these starting picks. <clears throat> I don't even want Gary Cole, but. He's currently going for $33. Yeah, I, I Frank got me down to the last second. I had him for 32. Frank jumped in for 33. He got him for a dollar less than Corbin Burns, which is what I have. Uh Garrett Cole priced at a dollar less than Corbin Burns, although six and seven dollars lower than they actually went, respectively. So we're we're still seeing that surplus. $82 above my consensus values so far, I think. Javier Baez and Dansby Swanson are the only players who have gone for less than I have them valued for so far. The point I want to make on Burns and Garrett Cole is that they are, I mean, I guess in the mock drafts we do, they're they're more like second round picks, like late second rounders. But based on ADP, I mean, it seems like a good value compared to Devers going for 40 and uh, Acuna going for 50 and some of those guys, you know, in the, mm-hmm. in the mid to upper 40. So I get it. You know, we think pitching is deeper. Seems like yeah, I I don't have any pitcher for more than twenty seven dollars. You guys, you guys value pitching more than I do. No, I've got Burns at twenty seven. I think I just have a a steeper drop off at the second tier of players or the third tier of players, whatever. And Bobachet goes for thirty two dollars. My Most first players. player, thirty two dollars. Yes. All right. Yeah, well, I think it's a good value. I mean, I like it too. I have him a couple spots ahead of Bobby Witt, and I got him for five dollars less, so I'll take that. Yeah, no, I think that's a a really good. Price comparatively to uh, to others, JT Real Muto currently up at twenty five, and I think we're starting to see prices cool a little bit. I think people came out in this draft really hot. A lot of the big name players get thrown out, and they go for decent amounts over what we have them budgeted for. And I think now we're starting to cool down a little bit and, and kind of come back to reality. Seeing uh, Garrett Cole for thirty three, Bichette for thirty two, and now JT Real Muto for twenty six. Yeah, that's a that's an okay price for Real Muto. All right, and it's my turn to nominate a player, and I'm just gonna get one of the another one of the big names off the board, throwing Trey Turner out there. For the most part, Chris, I have a similar nomination strategy to you. Uh, more often than not, I will nominate players that I am not interested in buying. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if we get to a point in the draft where I think things are kind of slowing down and people aren't spending money, I'll start to throw out players that I do want, uh, and I think I'll be able to potentially win them at a value. So. Speaking of which, Trey Turner was uh, slowing down at forty. Yeah, uh, Chris, uh, <laughs> getting a little antsy there. Would have been, would have liked to get him at forty. That yeah. would have been nice. Yeah, uh, not going to happen. He's up to forty three. You know, you already have Bichette, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, got yeah. a middle infield spot, Scott. And you but I'm going to let him go at forty three, which yeah. is actually the value I have him at. So that's probably the best buy of the day so far. Good job, R.J. White. Oh yes. RJ gets Trey Turner for 43. Reminder, Jose Ramirez went for 50. Ronald Acuna also went for 50. So nice little value. Yeah, and I, I have those guys pretty much all at the same value. So that that's, cl- I think, clearly the best buy so far. Yeah, I think things, once again, slowing down a little bit. And uh, Roddy Telez, another mid-tier player, getting thrown out there. And he is up to $6. No, he's not, because I bid seven. Ha-ha. <laughs> uh, and I just got outbid by, by $1. He's up to eight. Oh, it's tough with players like this early in, in the auction, admittedly. Just you don't well, know because with the with yeah. the overbids early on, o- overbids from the perspective of what we project them for, um, you don't know whether some of those mid tier guys l- much later on could go for very little money. Like maybe Rowdy Telez, if he lasts long enough, becomes a three dollar player mm-hmm. instead of the eight dollar player he was here. And so it's I agree. It's hard to go face value on that range of player this early on. So interesting because now Juan Soto gets thrown out after Trey Turner and the bidding was just very quickly aggressive on him and he gets all the way up to 45 and things just stop. Mm -hmm. So Juan Soto, a lot of doing playing in a league like this 
is when the player is thrown out. So if people view Juan Soto as that, you know, one of those last outfielders left top tier that they want, they're gonna will they're gonna be willing to go the yeah. extra the dollar or two, and and that's how someone like Soto winds up going for more than. Well, I, I don't know that that was so much the case here because Kyle Tucker's still out there, Mookie Betts is still out there. Well, Betts mm -hmm. just got nominated now. Fair. Um, but I do wonder if okay, Trey Turner plays a deep position, Juan Soto plays one of the shallowest positions, and if when you don't have that, when you're not um, you're not confined by turn order like in a draft, you know, and you might have a so you have an idea what you want to do free from the constraints of turn order. You're like, well, I want to get an outfielder. I think, I think people might be saying that a little more than, okay, I'm picking third. So I know if Trey Turner's there, I'm going to take him because that's who you're supposed to take picking third. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and Chris, you wound up winning Mookie Betts who got thrown out for $42 mm -hmm. You and him. You have now him and Bo Bichette. You have Bichette at 32. Uh, was that the, yeah, that's a nice little starting point. No, I don't, I don't, uh, make my little plans like you guys with your little your your little spreadsheets and whatnot. I, I'm I'm Nerdily. doing these. You know, I have a general idea of the team that I want to build, but I I tend to find that if I say I want this player and this player, I I screw myself up and I, I get too boxed in. So I, I I don't tend to go into my salary cap drafts with a specific plan. Edwin Diaz, first reliever off the board, goes for $22. So we'll keep that in mind for when other relievers get thrown out so we can compare and contrast. And I've got not to say, guys, I do have buyer's remorse on Garrett Cole. Was not part of the plan one bit. Just kind of felt <laughs> like he was going for too cheap. We'll see. We'll see how it turns out. And see, that's well, the I hardest like, job. I, mean, I feel like I people, think... start to, people start to, oh, it wasn't part of my plan. And then you, you start to... Oh no, what do I do? My plan, my plan. It's come on, guys. No plans. No surprise here. Chris throws out Cattell Marte, <clears throat> the tower's favorite right there. He's up to five bucks. But to me, the whole appeal of a salary cap draft is you actually get to do, or at least you have the option of actually doing what you want to do. You know, like I never get to have Aaron Judge because I never picked first. Well, now I can get Aaron Judge mm -hmm. and, and build the team I dream of with Aaron Judge at the top of it. All right. Well, um, Cattell Marte just went for seven dollars. I think Javi went for seven dollars or six earlier. So six. Yeah, yes. six. Similar price. One more dollar for Cattell Marte than Javier Baez to put that in perspective. Bryce Harper thrown out. Another interesting player, likely to miss the first half of the season, recovering from Tommy John surgery. I, I, I gotta say, like I, I know a, a lot of people get really excited about the prospect of drafting Bryce Harper, and and you know there there've been times in the past where high end player missing a lot of time. Um, I'm enthusiastic about getting him too, but I feel like, uh, I feel like with him specifically, it's, he's coming back so late, so late. Like he might not be back till August. Like what kind of impact is he going to be able to make? I do wonder, like he did hit off a tee for the first time today. Um, and so, you know, it, it's possible that it ends up being, a June ish return, like a late June return. Uh, but I, yeah, I haven't really heard any anyone think that. I mean, they're talking all star break at the earliest. If it was if it was mid June, it'd be different. That's that's a whole extra month of Bryce Harper, and then I could get behind paying eleven dollars for him. But like that is going right. Yeah, no, it's, it's like, it, like I have a couple of leagues where I was competitive while drafting Fernando Tatis and. I might have been able to win those leagues if Fernando Tatis had come back, but he just never did, you know? Right. And so, it's, and, it, and he was projected to come back more like early June, right? Yes. Or even earlier. All right. Well, a few names got thrown out in the meantime. Nathan Avaldi went for $2, got thrown out for one. Interesting. Uh, Bryce Harper wound up going for 11. Christian Walker is the current player being thrown out there. I'll let you know how much he goes for, but first I want to promote a few things. It's that fun time of year, spring training baseball, the world baseball classic. And of course, college basketball brackets are back compete against Scott, Chris and me in our FBT March madness bracket on the CBS sports. All you have to do is scan the QR code in the top right corner of the screen or click on the link in the podcast or YouTube description. The link, by the way, CBS sports.com slash baseball. You can't mess it up. It's, it's pretty easy. After you join our bracket, make sure to run men's and women's pools with friends and family. 
This player is thrown out here. Okay, Emmanuel Class A. With friends and family for the chance to win a new car and trips to the 2024 Final Four. Play today on the CBS Sports app or visit cbssports.com slash play to sign up. No purchase necessary. See terms and rules for details. And Emmanuel Class A goes for $23. Edwin Diaz went for $22. Yeah, that'll happen. And with that, we are going to take our first break. We'll be back right after this. Well, what do you think we're going to uncover out there? With some luck, maybe a green jacket as sharp as the one you get when you win the Masters. It's a tradition unlike any other. The Masters on CBS. Welcome back into Fantasy Baseball today, doing a live salary cap draft here, 12-team Roto League. Max Scherzer is the current player being thrown out, and he's up to $25. Big old jump bid to 25 and uh, up to 26 27 I'll tell you what, I feel pretty good about Garrett Cole right now at $32. We got RJ in here who's kind of an enforcer. He takes it right. Like if you're thinking, maybe I can get this guy for a dollar too less, and RJ takes it right to the amount he's supposed to go for. And it's like, oh, well, never mind. I always take it personally when he does it to the players that I'm betting on. <laughs> the yeah. enforcer, RJ White. For those who check out our other content, Sportsline and the Early Edge podcast, you know about RJ White. There's a lot of... uh Gambling football content with us here. Uh, Max Scherzer winds up going for twenty eight dollars. So just an interesting perspective that he goes for four dollars less than Garrett Cole at this point in the draft. Now it's going to be interesting to see where do these other aces go for? Do they also go upper twenties? Because if that's the case, then I think the Burns for thirty three and Garrett Cole for thirty two actually will turn out to look pretty good. Aaron yeah. Smalley went for uh, two dollars to the Enforcer, R.J. White. Oh, I'm up to nominate a player. Let's, uh, I mean, let's see what we got here. I'll throw out this guy. Throw out Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Let's see how much he's going to go for. Currently uh, battling... He's battling a injury. Remind me. Knee. Knee and yeah, knee injury. This thing's like a, a minor thing. Um, yeah, I think he's already like started doing baseball activities again. He backed away from the World Baseball Classic, but I think that was a... Uh, you know, more of a anything goes wrong and he's not playing kind of thing. I don't think there's an, an, an issue. Like, I, I I don't think you should be sweating Garrett Cole for what, 34? No, 32. 32. 32. 32. 32. I, I don't think you should be sweating that so much. I mean, I understand maybe you didn't want to buy that high end of a pitcher and, and that's a different conversation, but just, oh, this amount versus it could have been, you know, I could have gotten an ace for 29 instead of 32. Like, yeah. Garrett Cole is the best bet to lead the majors in strikeouts. There's no mm -hmm. other pitcher that can do that. And you're, you're going to have to pay a little premium for that. And it, it's probably, you know, if he follows through on it, it's worth it. Like there, he gives you, he, there is no other player like Garrett Cole in that way. So if that's what your team needs, then if it's a few dollars off, I, I just, I don't know that it's worth, I, I don't know that that's any, something to quibble about. I have no problem with the player, Scott, or the performance of Garrett Cole. I, I still have the utmost confidence in him. It's just, that was not part of the plan at all. So right. it's probably something that's going to be in the back of my mind for the rest of this draft. Uh, and we'll see how ultimately that's why you don't make a plan. Vladimir Guerrero goes for $36. Jeremy Pena goes for eight. Pretty good buy, buy on Pena. I know uh, what Vaughn Grissom went for six or seven. So yeah, I like that. It's a pretty good value on Jeremy Pena. Manny Machado is out there. He's currently up to 30 bucks. And I believe Rafael Devers went for uh, 40. Not to yes. throw any numbers out there, but just a reminder for those listening, for the listening audience. And he's now at 35 to Scott. No surprise there. Um, now I'm going to go 36. Oh, you're going you're gonna to press me on this. Uh, how far you want to take it, Frank? <laughs> how far are you going to push it? I don't know. How far are we going to go? Manny Machado is currently up to $38. I think I'm going to stop. And he goes to me. 38. Sorry, Scott. Nice little bitty okay. war. Okay. Um, but Devers I have my limits. Devers went for 40. I definitely did not want to spend that much on Machado, but I did want one, one of those elite. So if I had gone 39. I probably wouldn't have right gone now. 40. That's what you're saying? Yep. That's fine. It's fine. It's all good. All right. Who's up here? Kyle Tucker at 34. And Chris is in on the bidding. Ah, I'll throw a, little, throw a little one out there. See what happens. So I want to in back-to-back players. 38 might. Nice. 38 each. Machado and Tucker. That's not bad. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's Third go. Outfield filled. Look at that, Frank. 
All right, we're back on track, baby. There was always a plan. Forget what I said about Garrett Cole. <laughs> I, I mean, you got three stud players right now. I don't. Yeah, I do. Uh, oh, this is a fun one. Corbin Carroll being thrown out this early in the draft. It'll be interesting to see how much he goes for ultimately. Yeah. Corbin Carroll has been leading off so far in uh, in spring training. Seems like that might be his spot to start the season for the Diamondbacks. Up to uh, 18, 19, 20. 20 and counting. 21, 22. Scott is in. Bidding war with our defending champion. It's going to happen. Mm. Oh! Mm -mm -mm. Greg Lathrop back in for 23. Scott? Yeah, I'm going to pass on that too. Ah. I know. All right. Know. I'm, I'm already getting that feel. Like, thank God I have Aaron Judge because I'm already doing that thing that I feel like I've, I've done the past few years and been so disappointed with myself. Like, I'm willing to go a couple dollars over when you start going four or five over. It's just, no, no, no. Yeah, no, I get it. I, I totally get it. Uh, I'm currently keeping track of my money. So I'm just doing a little math here. All right. Yeah, the draft room does that for you. Uh, yeah, I know, but I, I, I've got a system here, Chris. I, your plan. Is that what you wanted? Chris, you, uh, you want Adam Virtual Mondesi for two bucks. Yeah, let's see. Sometimes that's what I, what, I, what, I, what I like to do sometimes early in the draft is throw out a guy who, like, if I can get him, fine. If not, like Scott said, with a dollar bid on, on Evaldi. But if it's a player that, like, I'm interested in actually getting, I'll do it for two because, you know, then it costs an extra dollar for someone to get him and you know it might not be smart to do that without alberto mondesi but i do think there's still some reasonable upside there for a very very cheap price all right will smith is the next one up here i believe there was only one catcher off the board so far it was mm -hmm. jt real muto and i think he went for 26 he did so will smith goes for 20 <coughs> all right that sounds like it's about right See, I've got, yeah, I got Will Smith at 20. I've got Real Muto price at 28. So goodbye so far at the catcher position. Scotty, you're up. Yeah, I am up, aren't I? All right, let's try, let's try Nolan Arenado here. Do you have a third baseman yet, Scott? I have Aaron Judge. Ooh, all right. So Arenado could be a player of interest for you. Um, Austin Riley and, and Arenado are kind of the last of that. I guess you could call it elite group before we see that big drop off that we talk about all the time at third base. And Arenado is now up to 30 bucks. No surprise. Scotty is in. And all the way in. Oh, mm. the enforcer. RJ white with the, <laughs> I think RJ just wants him. I don't think this is an enforcement thing. <laughs> So right. I'm at 32 for Arenado. And Arenado, by the way, hit a grand, grand slam. Yeah, it was like to like the center field portion of left center. It was basically an opposite field home run for him. <laughs> oh, that's great. Nice buy. It <laughs> might have been the furthest towards center field home run that he's hit since like 2020. I'm not actually joking on that. Scott, you wound up with Nolan Arenado for 32. What do you yep. think about the price? It's so I'd budgeted 35 for third base. Devers went for 40. Machado went for 38. Riley's still out there. Is he going to go for closer to, um, is he going to go for closer to, to, to 40 or is he going to go for closer to the 32 I spent on Arenado? I think he's going to go closer to, um, to 40. Okay. I just won Sandy Alcantara too. Did you mean to do that? No, I did. I, I mean, it's the sort of thing like uh, this sort of draft really requires at least my undivided attention. I, I don't, I don't divide my attention well. <laughs> and so um, I, I totally get it. I mean, trying to host this thing and draft is near yeah. impossible task. So <laughs> yeah. So I, had, I wanted to spend $25 on one starting pitcher. Um, so getting out counter for 28, when I just bought Arenado for 32 is exactly the difference, right? Cause I budgeted 35 for a third baseman. I got one for 32. I budgeted 25 for an ace. I got one for 28. So I was running that math, math calculation in my head as the, the clock was winding down. And I guess I'm happy with it. 
Yeah. And we bought him with one second left. Yeah, so yeah. Sandy you went for scoundrel. One dollar more than Max Scherzer. Gosh. And Ozzy Albies goes for twenty one dollars. That's, That's a good one, yeah. I should have yeah. been on all that. I was see, I was busy talking. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'll leave you alone, Scott. No, uh, just... <laughs> Ozzy Albies priced at twenty five dollars in Scott's rankings. Uh, twenty three for me and and twenty five for Chris. So yeah, goodbye there on Albies. Brandon Woodruff next up, another another in the ace category. Imagine he gets close ish to uh, Sandy and, and Max Scherzer, that mid to upper twenties kind of price, or not. I'm not bidding because of I've already got Garrett Cole. Ah, oh, that's good, man. That is good. Brandon Woodruff at twenty three dollars. Uh, I mean, I got him at twenty four. I, I think I'm just lower on pitchers than you guys are. Yeah, no, I'm that's for nineteen. Okay. I I I feel like I am the Woodruff guy on this podcast. Uh, yeah, I have, I'm at thirty four. That seems a little bit high. Probably got to lower that. Jordan Walker. All right, this is the name everyone came to see, came to hear about. Is that's a fourteen bucks? <laughs> All right, 15. Hmm. What about other players that went? Yeah, to? I mean, this is the sort of player, and, and and maybe I should have known this with Corbin Carroll. I just did an, uh, a, a Twitter survey. Who's your must-have player for this year? And, and Corbin Carroll won that survey. It's a very popular pick. Anytime you're talking about really trendy, popular player, um, like it's you're not going to get him for a reasonable price because like everybody's waiting for his name to come up. So Jordan Walker winds up going for 15. I'm trying to find another hitter that went in that range to try and compare. Christian Walker went for 12. So, oh, right. I mean, Christian oh, Walker. Swanson for 14. Yeah. Ah. All right. So, I mean, $15 for Jordan Walker. That probably hasn't priced us. Ah. Not a, a top 100 player. Austin Riley goes for 32. Scott, I'm sorry. Ah. Try not yourself. Uh, yeah, well. So I got Arenado for 32 and Riley went for 32. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought about bidding on him just for principle's sake, but I didn't. I don't feel great about it either. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like Machado and I like the value where I got him at the time. But if you're asking me would I have went 33 on Riley versus my 38 on Machado? Yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd, rather, I'd rather have Riley for $5 less. Mm -hmm. Wander Franco is the name that is currently up. And that's some fun breakout-ish type shortstop. And he's currently up to 10 to 11. Chris, Chris, you like Wander Franco this year? Uh, he was on my players. I have to draft at least once team because he, he's very much like where Vladimir Guerrero was at the start of the 2021 season, where the likeliest outcome is he probably disappoints, but the, the high end outcome is still worth chasing. Maybe not at a, you know, at, cost mo more often than not but you know want some exposure scott it's gonna be all right man I, you look like you are so stressed out right now. i am stressed oh man I'm it'll be all right i mean come on arenado's a good this point. is my favorite part of a salary cap draft is scott spiraling and then two hours from now oh, no, i kind of like my team yeah it's i'm sure all part of the process chris see if i don't like self-flagellate now then i can't make the comeback i need to make can someone else flagellate you or is there only self-flagellation uh, nobody can a, flagellate a, me as well as i flagellate is that a myself. discussion for like an 11 o'clock podcast not an eight o'clock podcast yeah we'll wait for when we're in the reserve rounds <laughs> then we'll bring that back up and see, see how you guys feel let's catch people up wander franco went for 16 so almost one only one dollar more than jordan walker interesting Freddie Freeman goes for 36 to put that in perspective. I spent 38 on Machado. So I think Freeman is a relatively good buy. And uh, he went to RJ. RJ was waiting everyone out and he's kind of gobbling up the, uh, the big name value right now with, with Freddie Freeman at 36, Austin Riley at 32. And a couple of good buys. I'm a little there. lost right now because I wanted, I, I targeted specific players for batting average help specific hitters for batting average help thinking you need to, if you're going to spend, you need to get batting average as part of that spending. And I got Arenado instead who hit, hit over 290 last year, but you know, I, I, I think his true 
batting average range outside of course field is probably between 260 275 right um so now i'm wondering if i can live up to my expectations for batting average with what's out there still and we'll see yeah, there's there's a lot of players left sky you can there's find a lot of players, players but you know it's been a lot of money Josh Hader went for 17. I know that Diaz went for 22. Class A went for 23. So, so far, the relief pitcher market has pretty much been on point. I would say this is how much the, these elite relievers should be going for. Paul Goldschmidt went before that for $31. So $1 less than Austin Riley. Patrick Sandoval is currently up. Has talked this spring about how he had issues throwing his changeup last year, which is his best pitch. And I mean, he still had a good ERA. The, the whip was very high as it always is with Sandoval. I uh, outsmarted myself on this one. Uh, yeah, you, th- was, you thought- was hoping I'd be able to, because you guys had him as a dollar player. I was hoping, like, <laughs> I'd, I'd go up to four, and he immediately went up to four, and he went for eight, ultimately. And I... Uh, Popular. Got to do that with, been, like, an Evaldi type. Yeah, might have been able to get him later for cheaper. Oh, well. The hope for Patrick Sandoval is that he's if he's right, then the changeup could bounce back and we could get even more strikeouts this season from Patrick Sandoval. Felix Bautista is currently being thrown out and he's up to $13. Uh, he's all right. He's going up pretty aggressively here. Hader went for 17. Uh, Bautista still has not appeared in a spring training game yet as he deals with knee and shoulder issues, but I have confidence. I know he's uh, Good price if he's healthy. Yeah. Scheduled to go for, to throw live batting practice next week. And if all goes well there, we, we could see him in a spring game after that. Felix Bautista goes for $15. Again, I think that's about right. The relief pitcher market has been on point so far. Jose Altuve gets thrown out. So uh, one of those top-tier second basemen, the first of that group, Marcus Semien hasn't gone yet. Neither has Jazz. Uh, all right, and we get a big jump up to 27. You know, Scott's not going to let him go for that cheap. And will will Scotty win him? 28? I don't know. Ah. Uh, I don't and know. RJ is out to get you today, Scott. Jeez. RJ, RJ, I think hard RJ, RJ thinks very highly of me. Okay. So he's, uh, I mean, why, why wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Hey, it's all good all right. until, until we enter the draft room, Scott, then there, there's no more friends. So, <laughs> so Jose Altuve was one of those guys. I absolutely was dead set on getting, I budgeted 35 for him. And he got, I got him for 30 so that, you know, I can breathe a little sigh of relief now. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah, you've you've got him at 28 on the site. Oh, well, I've got head-to-head rankings up. Let's it would look it would be better if I look at Roto. You That's got him I do. Like I try to like these are the players I want. Let me round up and then I'll be sure I'll get them. And then <laughs> it doesn't always happen that way. But it happened in L2B's case, so I feel good. Oh, this is a fun one. Spencer Strider made another spring start on Thursday at five strikeouts. No surprise. I think it was like three and a third innings. He's up to 25 bucks. So uh, there was another pitcher that went recently. Brandon Woodruff went for 23. So that's it's a little aggressive on Strider, but he's another one of those names, a hot name, like kind of like Corbin Carroll, where the people who are in on Strider this year are really in. Yep. And and they're gonna over overpay a little bit to make sure they get him. Maybe it's not an overpay. And maybe Strider will be awesome again. I don't maybe it's the perfect amount of payment. It might be, Scott. It might be. Next up, oh, ho, 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 Corey Seager throwing out a 25 buckaroos. Jeez. Yeah, that's a, that was a, that's an aggressive, aggressive first toss there. That's one where you throw it out there and you see, let me just see if I could catch everyone off guard and, and get Corey Seager for 25 right off the rip. But that will not happen because Scott is the current bid winner at 30. Will it hold? Yes, it will. All right. So that's, you know, kind of the exact same thing as Arenado and, and Alcantara. So I, I, I went, I, I, I budgeted 25 for Seager. I got Altuve $5 below budget. So I just added those $5 to Seager. Um, and now I feel like I'm in a really good spot for batting average, which is where I wanted to be after buying Altuve and Seager, hopefully a middle infield combo that'll combine to hit 300. And, uh, okay. I think I'm in, I think I'm in an okay place now. Scott, are you were you planning to go with stars and scrubs coming in? Because yes, you, all right. So you've got yes. Altuve at thirty, 
Arenado 32, Seager 30, yes. Judge at 48. So yeah, you're going to I didn't want to say right. that right off the top. <laughs> of course <laughs> because not. Then, <laughs> then people would have been bidding me up on all the high-end guys. Right. Uh, but yes, this was very much my strategy uh, pre-juice ball era. And it worked out pretty well for the most part. Because there's I'll a lot the scrubs in this depth of format can often turn out to be pretty good players. Yeah, I was looking at some of the the, the draft recap from last year, and, and you're exactly right about that. Chris, you won Justin Verlander at 27. How are you feeling about that price tag? Pretty happy about it. This is another league that I'm I'm going to be very, very invested in Justin Verlander this season. I just think he's uh, a little undervalued relative to what you're likely to get from him. So, um, yeah, I, I'm very happy to get Verlander. I swear I didn't do this on purpose. It was kind of a jerk move, but I threw a question to you and then I threw out Fernando Tati, someone I know. Oh, you it's okay. Not not the nicest thing on, on my end here. Fernando Tati's up to $31. And that's where we just saw, you know, Arenado and, and Austin Riley and some of those guys go for. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty good. That, that's a good price. It's a good I'm price. happy with it. I'm taking on, you know, some risk there, but I... You know, it's really just got to keep my head afloat for for three weeks, and then he's back, and uh, I think he's going to be arguably the best player in fantasy. So it's a uh, the fate of my fantasy season is going to be very tied to Fernando Tatis and Justin Verlander. It do you seems. Care, do you care that he's hitless in spring so far? Not even <laughs> a small modicum of an amount. Uh, yeah, that was yeah. I he's did. saving like, I, them. I, he's due. If I hadn't taken Tatis as my round one player in, in Tout Wars, I might have game planned for him a little more. Uh, but I knew I wanted Seager in this one, and I knew I didn't want to fill middle infield. Because the thing about this is we're only doing starting lineups, so you can't draft, you can't pick yeah. players beyond the starting lineup. You know? Yeah, no, I'm I'm maxed out on, I've got shortstop, middle infield, and utility filled now, so that's not great. And I find there's a lot of low-dollar second baseman in particular that I like, but some shortstops mm -hmm. too. Alex Bregman went for $20 and Matt Olson is currently up to 21, uh, which seems like a pretty good price. Go yeah. Oh, that's what I have him for. My watch just yelled at me. Sorry about that. For, <laughs> for those that heard Siri, uh, Matt Olson goes for $21. All right. Goodbye. It's a great buy. It's a, it's a great buy. Uh, $1 more than Alex Bregman. I'd much rather, even the Bregman buy, I think is okay, but I'd much rather have Matt Olson uh, for $1 more. Pete Alonzo is up. And no one's bidding. Come on, let's, uh, <laughs> yeah, let's get this going. <laughs> Come on. So like, you got to give people a little. You got to give you a little nudge sometimes, you know. All right. I mean, this is just too cheap. What are we doing? All right. Yeah. Let's get him up there. Twenty-eight dollars for Pete Alonzo. Uh, Corey Seager went for thirty. Mm -hmm. Oh man. I mean, I don't really want. Which, to which I'll fully admit was an overbuy, by the way. Like I, that, that kind of goes to what I was saying earlier. Like I, I feel like if I want, if I want my shortstop to be a big power hitter and a big source of batting average, Corey Seager is the player who does that. You know, and there's something to be said for price enforcement, right? Something I just did right now. I didn't want Pete Alonso. I don't have him budgeted. It's, I don't want to spend up at first base. He was slowing down at 25. Okay. I'll go 26. Slowing down at 28. Too cheap. I'll go 29. And Pete Alonso winds up going for 30, which is still a good price. But uh, I just, I didn't want him to go for a, as cheap as he was at the time. So Salvador Perez, next catcher up. He's uh, up to $15. believe that Will Smith went for 20. What do I have written down here for catcher? Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to wait. Chris, you guys like Salvador Perez. You guys are back in on him. Yeah, I am. I am. It's just, you know, he was, he, he obviously let me down last year. Uh, he was the player I was most invested in and it didn't work out. But with the price, Chris won him, by the way, for $17. I, I went 16, Chris went 17 and won him. But for, you know, now, now he's going for much less than that. And, it, and the facts haven't changed. He's still the best bet for home runs at the position and by far the best bet for RBI at the position. So if you're looking for, uh, advantages, you know, if, if you're looking for those kinds of those one of one of the kind sort of players that I think are are most worth investing in in a salary cap draft like this, I, I think Salvador Perez fits the bill. And once Salvador Perez returned from injury in the second half last year, he looked like 
Salvador Perez. Not yep. obviously not the breakout 48 home run type Salvador Perez, but he looked really, really good once he returned. He went for 17 to Chris. Jack Flaherty went for nine. I think that was another kind of sneaky one that just kind of got out of hand. And yep, that was that's another one just like Patrick Sandoval, where if I got him for three, I would have been happy with it, but I was happy to let him go at four. Dalton Varsho is up to 20. And he ended up going for nine. Yep. I think mm-hmm. I think this is a, about the right price for Dalton Varsho. JC Ruminso went for 26. And Varsho goes for 23. Yeah. Will Smith. I would have, I would have gone. I would have gone. Go ahead, Scott. Uh, Scott, adjust your mic because it's cutting out a little bit. Oh. I, I would have gone 18 on Salvador Perez now knowing. I would have had to go 24 for Var Show. Okay. So, oh well. You're up to uh, throw out a player, Scotty. Yeah. Uh, let's do. Let's do Trout. Do you have the a last... specific nomination strategy? Not at this stage, so much. Um, hang on, I might be in on this. Okay, he's up over 30 right away. Uh, yeah, um, I think that's fine, but I don't think I really have the funds for it. So that's fine. Um, at, at this stage of the draft, I'm more likely to throw out a player I want that I don't want. Like, like I had early on, I think my first nomination was Javier Baez to be sort of a tester and he wasn't somebody I wanted. Obviously I was just kind of getting, taking the temperature of the room, seeing what an odd, oddball nomination like that, how people would respond to it. Uh, but f- I generally, I, I generally prefer to nominate players I want just to know if it's realistic. I'm actually going to get them. If I'm holding out false hope, I need to know that early so that I can pivot to another high end player. If right. I wait until all the high end players are gone, and then nominate the guy I want, and find out then that the price I had in mind wasn't realistic. Well, I'm in a whole lot of trouble because they're all the good players are already gone. So that's that's why I tend to be more of a nominate the one you want at this very early stage of the auction. One thing I do like about the like throw Jesse Winker out for two dollars or whoever, however much he was nominated for, is like it is nice to have some price certainty about the end of your roster early on. You know, like that to know that like okay, I got Jesse Winker for two dollars if that happens. Now I know you know some of the paths that I don't have to take. And it helps with your average cost per remaining player, Chris. You know, all right, if I get a $2 or $3 winker, that's how much he went for. You know, all right, I could maybe spend up a little bit more at one of these other spots that I yeah. I have budgeted for. Julio Arias is the next pitcher that is thrown out here. He's currently at $22. I'm struggling with Julio Arias because we know we're not going to get like the elite innings or elite strikeouts from him, but he's been so good at run prevention. But and the Dodgers... Is- Dodgers defense seems a little shakier than it has been. They've been like, I, I want to say over the past four seasons, they've been like 20 points in Babbitt better than the average team or something like way better in, in terms of their pitching Babbitt allowed. And so I, I do wonder if he's just like a good source of ERA. Is he worth the, the price? I think that's fair. I mean, I don't worry as much. I know you didn't bring this up, but some people might worry about the shift restrictions for Dodgers pitchers. Obviously, he's a lefty, and he's more of a fly ball pitcher. So I think he'll mostly still be all right, maybe closer to a three ERA pitcher than he has been in years past. But Mm. he consistently goes six, plays on a great team. He has 37 wins over the past two years. I think I mostly trust Julio Rios, and he went for a good price at $22. Aaron Nola went for 27, the same cost as Justin Verlander. That sounds about right. Sounds about yeah, right. That's fine. I, I I was in on Nola up to about 25. So you know, it would have been nice to get a second ace with huge ending potential, but it wasn't mm. quite worth it. The enforcer Oof. enforced himself. Nominated McClanahan for 25, won McClanahan for 25. I mean, it's a fine price for McClanahan. I just yeah. hope you wanted him. <laughs> yeah. So we're getting, we got a little bit of a pitcher run here. Arias for 22, Nova for 27, McClanahan for 25. And uh, those all seem pretty I should, reasonable. I should throw a player out, shouldn't I? Uh, it is I, your turn to nominate a player. That is correct. Uh, I'm going to throw this gent out here. Randy Rosarena for a dollar. 
leading off for Team uh, Team Mexico in the WBC. Shane McClanahan, by the way, has made two spring appearances, and fastball velocity has been right around 96, 97 miles per hour in those starts. Uh, and so far, the returns have been shoulder is okay. Hopefully that will remain the case, uh, but I feel a little bit better uh, about Shane McClanahan now that I've seen him pitch a little bit. Randy Rosarena is up to $23. Went uh, 20 homers, 30 steals last year. Back-to-back 20 seasons, 2020 seasons for him. And Chris, you are the winner. Yeah, that's um, at least by my values, that is the highest ranked player who went for cheaper than I have him valued for. So I'll, I'll take that. Yeah, that is good, actually. I'm looking yeah, at three dollars cheaper than I have him for my values. I've got him at 27. So I don't know. Maybe I should stop talking and <laughs> start bidding. <laughs> What's going on here? What am I doing? No, I've What's got happening? I'm pretty happy with my team right now because I, I think I mean, obviously, you're seven players and you're you're always going to have good players. But I think I've got a good balance of speed, power and batting average so far. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I've only got three players so far. I've got Manny Machado, I've got Kyle Tucker, I've got Garrett Cole. So, won some big names early, and I'm just kind of laying low. I'm, I'm waiting for the right names to pop out here. Matt Chapman is about to go. Oh, he was about to go for nine dollars. He's up to ten for those that need a third baseman or a corner infielder with some pop. Contract year for Matt Chapman, so perhaps we could see the best of him yet. But what we're gonna do is we'll take our second break here in uh, part one of this podcast. This is going to be a three-part podcast, by the way, so I hope you have time this weekend. <laughs> Listen to all three parts. Let's take a break. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back into Fantasy Baseball today. Stalling Marte is the player currently being bid on. Matt Chapman went for $10. Uh, Marte is one of these players we haven't seen play yet in the spring, returning from surgery on both of his groin tendons earlier in the off season. Sounds like he could make his debut either over the weekend or next week. And uh, he's slowing down here at $15. Yeah. I thought I was going to get him for 14 and then I'll have to explain why I just won one of my bust <laughs> yeah. candidates, but I had a good reason. I'm not going to go 16. Though. I mean, I almost got all these. So, you know, it happens sometimes. I wish I had gotten all these. Man, that's the one that that's the one that gets to me. I could add all these for 22. Mm. Ozzy Albies, the one that got away, Scott. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Starling, Mar one. Starling Marte goes for $15, which that's what me, I've got him for. If he's healthy. It's it's a fair price. So if he's uh, healthy, it's a steal. Oh, well. If he's healthy and he performs like he has yeah. in years past, because last year, you know, the steals were down, Chris. The, he, he was not efficient on the base paths. But let's stop talking about Starling Marte because O'Neill Cruz is up. And, that's and I doing. cannot bid on him because I have no spot in my lineup for him. Oof. So that's where my cute little throughout Alberto Mondesi as a bench player strategy blows up in my face. Uh, mm -hmm. Who was the one last year? It was. Scott wanted Sean Manaya or something. And <laughs> don't remind me. All right. Don't remind me. I that, was, that was the that was the angriest I have been on the air before. Ever. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> oh man, um, you know, uh, I want to be it was in. slowing down. I thought I was gonna hop in here on O'Neill Cruz, but I uh, wanted to be in on O'Neill Cruz, but he's up to twenty three dollars. Yeah, it is a lot. That's I, the I same price as oh, twenty four now. That's the same price as Randy or Rosarena went for twenty three. Yeah, I I mean again, some of these high players yeah, just get but, out of control, man. But like yeah. I mean, again, it's it's different. It's different when you're doing a snake draft versus sure. a salary cap draft because most people are gonna who really want O'Neill Cruz are gonna anticipate taking him in round five or round four at the earliest. And that them taking Al um them taking Randy O'Rosarena in round three doesn't change that. Sure, yeah. But you know, like if 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 everything we hope and dream for O'Neill Cruz comes true, he's better than Randy Rosarena. Yeah, I mean, of course. I mean, we're not you know drafting him in snake drafts at his ceiling, Scott. And I'm not saying twenty four dollars dollars is his ceiling. If everything pans out, he could turn out to be a thirty dollar player. But you just yeah. kind of you sap some of the profit out of it when you go that high. You know, that's that's the issue. With oh, I know, and I, I just think. 
I just think I'm I'm not as concerned about it in the mixed mixed versus AL. I know nobody plays AL and then only anymore, but the depth of this league makes me not as concerned about it. And that's a great buy, Scott. You just won Cedric Mullins for twenty two. He went for a dollar cheaper than a Rosa Reina, two dollars less than O'Neill Cruz. So if speed was a priority there for you, I, I think it was a great buy. And it was because my best steel source to this point was either Altuve or Judge. So I didn't have a great one. All right. So fits the roster but, here. And Chris, come on, man. It's too early for Gabriel Moreno. <laughs> I kind of wanted him, but, and I went $2, but he winds up going for four. I don't want to spend $5 on Moreno. I, I'm sure I'll get a, a cheaper second catcher later on in the draft. Yep. But there is some excitement. I know he hit his second home run of the spring the other day. And uh, if Moreno can raise that launch angle a little bit, we know how talented he is. Makes a lot of contact, hits the ball hard. But that's the next step for uh, Gabriel Moreno. Adley Rutschman is up to 16. And he is gone for 16. One dollar less than Salvador Perez. I really like Adley Rutschman, more so for head-to-head -head points leagues. But Chris, I, I kind of worry about from a roto it's, perspective, I don't know if he's going to do enough in the categories to, it's, to huge stand out this season. I think it's, he'll be there eventually, not maybe not this season though. It's right, very Wander Franco esque. Yeah. Where like when you project him out all the way and like what he could fully become, he's clearly p capable of being an elite player, even in roto. The immediate future seems like it's more of a very, very good player across the board, you want but not necessarily a great player. Not for, you know, $4. All right, I just want fair warning. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, for $2. I'm, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Scott's trying to get back at me for, for sending out a tweet about Space Jam. Throwing, <laughs> up, throwing up cheap players that I like. I want to. Oh, I, I think of him as more of a Chris guy. Sorry. No, that, that wasn't, that wasn't directed at you at all. That no. was directed at Chris. <laughs> I, I love Cabrera <laughs> too. So big fan, big fan. Three pitches with a whiff rate over 30%. If Edward Cabrera could throw strikes, I think he's going to be awesome. Alejandro Kirk has not appeared in spring training yet. I believe he's been away with the, for the birth of his child, so it's nothing injury-related. Should be fine. Uh, I know some people have shared concerns about the, the second half for Alejandro Kirk. Scott, do you share those concerns? Uh, well, his, his second half, half was pretty bad. Um, it's less that for me. I mean, that, that is, that is something that's in the back of my mind, but it's less that than just the DH at bat. Uh, of course they have Danny Jansen. So how much, how many bats is Kirk going to get? He's not a big home run source. I think he has the potential for more home runs, but as things stand, he's not a big home run source. And if he's not playing as often as some of the other catchers, then that's going to hurt him in runs and RBI. So he really needs to be a standout and batting average. And I think he can. It's just putting a lot of pressure on that. Mm -hmm. um, $12 is fine for him. Cabrera went for three. As you mentioned, Kirk went for 12. We've got Shane Bieber, who is up to 22. I know we had a run of pitchers earlier. Arias also went for 22. So that sounds about right. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. Yeah. I have Bieber ranked higher. Than Arias, so I, I think the Bieber buys a little better, but I think both are fine. All right. Who's up? Tim Canning. Let's get a player out there. Come on. Keep it moving, gentlemen. Adolis Garcia for four. I'll go five. How about that? <laughs> uh Adolis Garcia. I like the value this year. I don't I know his batting average will be go lower than a Rosarena, but I don't I don't think go that for he, it. Go for it. Nah, it's gonna not, be gone. Not part oh, of the plan. You had not your chance. The, not part of the plan, Scott. Uh, plan. Everybody has a plan until they don't. Mm. I think mine is kind of dwindling. No, I'm kidding. But it's a good buy on Garcia. He went for 17. A Rosarena went for 22. The point I was gonna make. I don't know that he's that dissimilar from a Rosarena. They're both very aggressive. They don't walk very much. They're gonna give you power and speed. I think there's a low floor for both of them. Uh, but. Yeah, I, I do think a Rosarena, his plate discipline's a little better. Um, a little bit, yeah. So he feels a little safer in that regard. He's a little bit younger too, which which also helps, I think. But yeah, very similar players. I think Cedric Mullins is in that conversation too, as just relatively low batting average, but good, you know, power speed guys. 
Taylor Ward goes for 13. Looked like he was going to be a nice little value for a second and yeah. then got pumped up a little bit, but 13's fine for him. There's some optimism within the industry. I, I wrote him up in Sleepers 1.0. Uh, yeah, I took him out of my bus 2.0. Okay, I've got to throw a player out there. I'll throw Zach Wheeler. I think it's a pretty good value, all things considered, this year, where the ADP is at. He's uh, been experimenting with a a new kind of slurve, slider, sweeper type pitch in, in spring training. And who isn't? You know? uh, Zach Wheeler. Not like he needs it, but. No, oh, I said who isn't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Zach Wheeler goes for 21. That's a good price. Good, yeah. Goodbye. One dollar less than Shane Bieber. All right. Don't mind that. Scott, you don't have any. Do you have any pitchers yet? I have Alcantara. Okay. Yep. That's right. Eugenio Suarez for two. Speaking of new pitches, a guy we talked about today on the emergency pod, Frank uh, Clark Schmidt, throwing a cutter now. That that's kind great. of interesting because he's got a really, really good slider and a pretty good curveball. His fastballs are kind of. Did, did that just happen? Eugenio Suarez, Suarez for two dollars. After yep. Matt Chapman, just a few picks after Matt Chapman went for 10. That That's sounds about right. I think so. Yeah. Mm. It's a great buy. Mm. Oh, hey, Eugenio Suarez. Uh, yeah, Chris, to your point, Yankees pitching coach Matt Blake, he kind of emphasizes this cutter. So it could be a new weapon for Clark Schmidt. I know Severino started throwing it last year. Mm -hmm. Eric Cole kind of mixed it in a little bit. So I don't think it could hurt. I don't think it could hurt uh, Clark Schmidt. He looked okay. Likely to step into the rotation of Carlos Rodon. And I think he enters the certainly the 15 team. And I think even the 12 team, very, very like reserve round discussion if you're looking for a, a flyer pitcher early. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if he's one of the last picks in the reserve rounds in this draft. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's that's a 12 team roto league. It's a little bit deeper roster. Yeah. In a head to head points league, probably not on Clark Schmidt. Kyle Schwarber goes for $28. Scott, how are we feeling? I know that's uh, it's one of your heart throbs. Uh, yeah, I helped get him to eighty-eight. I mean, to twenty-eight. I had him. I bid on him at twenty-seven. Um, but then I wasn't willing to go twenty-nine. I didn't really plan for him, but I have. Uh, I planned for Dalton Varsho, so I have some extra Dalton Varsho bucks I can spend, and not sure yet how I want to spend them. So I'm just kind of in on everybody until they're spent. What is the exchange rate of Shroot bucks to Varsho bucks? I've got nothing. <laughs> no, Scott? no, nobody gets that one. I, I mean, I assume Shroot Bucks. That's that's from the office. Uh, that's an office, office reference. Yeah. Yeah. No, I got you. Man, Bogarts for fourteen. That's a good one. Some of the some of these shortstops, Swanson yeah. for fourteen. It's those those were good good buys. Ten dollars less than O'Neill Cruz. I mean, I get it, guys. I like O'Neill Cruz too, but man. Yeah, Xander hit a hit a home run in the World Baseball Classic yesterday. Good to see that. Love to see it. And Ryan Presley goes for uh, almost 15, now up to 16. One dollar more than Felix Bautista and one dollar less than Josh Hader. That sounds about right. Makes me makes me think Hader was a pretty good buy, though. Yeah. So Diaz and Class A went for 22 and 23. Here, let, let's, let's see where you are at, Scott. Ah. Uh, Jared Kelnick thrown out for two. Yeah, I'm not going to go three on him. I knew Didn't someone they? would, though. <laughs> wow, now all of a sudden, Scott doesn't like Jared Kelnick. What's going on, man? I like Kelnick for a dollar or two. But three. <laughs> now he's up to four. I mean, that's that's 50% more than two dollars. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Four dollars for Jared Kelnick. And Scott, did you see the news that Garrett Mitchell left today on thursday when we're recording with yeah. uh strained hamstring one of your boys uh when i saw it they said it was precautionary precautionary removal um had, has that changed or are they still sticking with that line i'll pull it up for now but that was the last that i saw as well okay All right, well here's one definitely directly pointed at scott's heart yeah, yeah. Miguel argus the bidding is currently open let you know where that winds up and See, he's up to nine bucks. Yeah, Scott. Just, how, how much do you have him? How much do you have budgeted for him? I did not budget for him, and I have him as a six dollar player. So, um, 
Mm, my turn to nominate here. Miguel Vargas went for nine. Garrett Mitchell, the latest I'm seeing, is precautionary. Correct. On the hamstring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do this guy. Let's see how this goes. I did see a couple... There are a couple injuries today. Harrison Bader has an oblique, and there's another Don't pitcher who has an oblique injury. Well, I've got two, really. Yeah. I mean, but he has an oblique injury. Is there oh. is there a Yankee player that is healthy right now? Could someone? I mean, gosh, they are dropping like flies. Oh, I'm Carlos, sure there, there is. Carlos Rodon, they've got Lou Trevino and Tommy Canley starting the season on the IL. Yep. Now Bader with the oblique, which is... If he's not ready for the start of the season, I don't think he will. Mm -hmm. Oswaldo Cabrera in center field, or maybe they play Judge in center. And although Cabrera is uh, Cabrera's been missing a few days, right? Uh, no, that was Peraza. Ah, okay. You're doing, you're doing the thing again. See, I'm doing it again. <laughs> this is a good nom, uh, Lars Newbar. Yeah. It'll be fun to see where he goes among this group. It's it's interesting that that survey I referred to. Who's your must-have player for this year? I thought Lars Newbar would be one of the top vote getters. He got three votes, so I, I don't know if he's just everybody's player they want the second most, or mm -hmm. or what the deal is. But he's a very trending player, at least at least among the fantasy analyst ranks. Of course, those were the only people answering the survey. Chris Chris jumping in here at eleven dollars. Chris doesn't usually go for the trends, and I love Lars Newbar too. But now he's up to twelve. There's no yeah. way I can get in at that. At that price, I mean, I've got him at ten now, so like, it's you know, eleven was fine, twelve is fine. I think if you want him, that's you know what you're going to have to play. And even given some of the other prices we've seen, that that's perfectly reasonable. Taylor Ward went for thirteen. I have Ward ranked a decent bit higher than New Bar. There is, yeah, I do too. I mean, I I move New Bar up a lot, but he's still six dollars for me. Yeah, I know. Do you do you have him ahead of Castellanos, Chris? Uh, I don't think so. No. And your McCutcheon thrown out for two bucks. So some people trying to fill out the scrub side of their stars and scrubs strategy. I love McCutcheon. I'm I'm not going to say a bad word about him. I do want to get back to the Vargas thing. Me not bidding on him for nine or buzz or budgeting for him. When you go stars and scrubs, I notice some people are making fun of me for my approach with that. When you go stars and scrubs, like one thing you have to be willing to accept is you're not going to get your sleepers because in, mm -hmm. in salary cap drafts, you have to go the extra dollar for sleepers. And yep. you went the extra dollar for the studs instead. So you need to be where you need to be really protective of your dollars or, or the low dollar guys. Like you, you can't go $4 for a $3 player. Um, you can't go $3 for a $2 player. And you certainly can't go $9 for a $6 player, as this would have been the case with Vargas and me. Mm -hmm. Dylan Seach just went for $20 one day after giving up 11 earned runs in less than a one one inning of work. I mean, that doesn't really matter, right? We made uh, fun of it on the podcast, but we don't, it, it we don't actually think that's the reason not to bid on Seach, right? No, but it wouldn't surprise me if he went for a 2 to $3 discount just because that's fresh in people's minds because he went for 20 and Shane Bieber went for 22 Arias went for 22 I, I think Cease probably should go for around that price too. So I think maybe you got a slight discount uh, on Dylan Cease there. Yeah, no, it's 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 a fine buy for Cease. I kind of wonder if I should have been in on it, frankly, since my number one is Alcantara, whose biggest shortcoming figures to be strikeouts. All right, Byron Buxton went for 14. Chris, asleep at the wheel? What's up, man? No, 14's a, a fine price for him, but it's not such a steal that I, I feel bad about not getting him. Yeah, that's I've got him for 12. You've got him for 14. So that's just about right. Eloy Jimenez is the name that is out right now. Is Are you at? Oh, I'm don't worry, Chris. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm I'm letting things slow down a little bit. It's all it's all part of the strategy. It's all part of the strategy, Chris. Yeah, I mean, I can't. Can't, can't what? Let that go either. Uh, oh, I mean, the, the price was ridiculous there for Jimenez. Yeah, well, we're doing yeah. it on purpose. Letting people now think it's them. now it's a it's closer to okay. So you went in on eighteen. That's exactly what I have Jimenez for. So back off, everybody. Is Frank's guy not allowed to go over? That's my guy. And Chris, 
something I was doing there, and I do it on purpose, is I let it get down to three, two, one. I know a lot of people get annoyed by that, but I get annoyed by that. Psychology, I'm with you. It, it is. Oh, no, that is that is like something that I have to guard against because if someone does that to me, I will just automatically hit the button, <laughs> and it. Yeah, I know it's not good. Yeah, and so well, I, I, I have to try to like back off and and stay centered, and uh, yeah, no, it's. Now, I, I have interesting. to be aware. It's interesting that you say that because my reasoning for doing that when I do it is I want them to think I'm about to back off and I'm really having a hard time going this extra dollar so that they don't then try to bump me up another dollar. So you're saying my psychology actually has a reverse more, effect. Makes me more likely to bid mm. out of spite. Yeah. Mm. Hey. Interesting. Chris Bryant goes for $11 and Marcus Semyon gets thrown out at 25. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to end part one of this podcast, but make sure to log into uh, part two to keep it rolling here on fantasy baseball today. Welcome into part two of our live salary cap slash auction draft that we are doing left off part one with Marcus Semyon, who was thrown out at 25. Guess what? He goes for $1 more 26 and Scott, you won Altuve at 30, correct? I did, yes. So, would you rather have? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, you, you can't. I, I want the, if I'm spending, I want batting average, and that's not okay. something Simeon's going to get me. All right, fair enough. So, Simeon for uh, for the 26 there. Scott got Altuve at 30. Vinny P, baby, is up there at uh, 14. Oh, people want people want Vinny P. They want Vinny P. And I baby. am in 16. Who wants Vinny P more, Frank? Me yeah. or you? Well, it's it's a little gonna bit be, of a bidding war here. It's going to be you. You're going to get him at 17. Hands off the keyboard. Awesome. That means I'm done. You can take him for 18. Nope. All, right. All yours. And you finally get I, him. I'm glad I have one share of Vinny P because <laughs> it wasn't going well in the snake drafts. Right. Yeah. And it's yeah. another source of batting average, hopefully. Admittedly, I wanted him too. I had him written down for 14 or 15, Scott. And, you know, yeah. a couple dollars gets passed. I'm like, all right, I'll slow it down yeah. on, on Vinny P. He's all yours. I, I I had 15 for him too. I could justify 17, but 18, I agree with you. It was yeah. more than I could do. Kevin Gosman is up to uh, 15 bucks. Chris is in. I know there's been some discussion this spring about uh, Kevin Gosman and the new the new rules that they're kind of cracking down on box. And apparently there's a lot of movement in the way that he pitches. Um, and, and he's still kind of struggling with that. I read an article about how it's something Gosman is working on throughout spring training and, and making sure he's set with, with these new rules that are, are coming into play this season. But he made another spring start on uh, Thursday. He looked fine. Chris, is this a concern of yours at all when it comes to Kevin Gosman, the the new rules and the crackdown on box? It could be a concern. So much of performing at this level is mental, but I I don't factor it into how I'm viewing him at all. Uh, it, it's a risk factor, but it's one that I have to imagine he'll get over. Hey, these guys are professionals, right? Same thing as Kenley Jansen with the pitch clock, right? It's Ultimately, I'm not that worried uh, about Kenley Jansen. I, I think he'll be all right. Maybe early on in the season, struggles a little bit with it, but uh, I, I think he'll he'll come around. Michael Conforto went for two. Kevin Gosman again, went for 19. And now uh, Big Pete. Yeah, oh. I, I threw Conforto out there just because I did see today he played in the outfield for the first time, so that's a good sign as he's coming back from that shoulder surgery. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. I would have been happy with him at a dollar, willing to let him go at two. And I'm pretty sure he hit a home run, Chris, either today yes, or yesterday. Yep. Yeah, Michael Conforto, that is. Pete Fairbanks is up to nine bucks. He's a hype guy this year, rightfully so. Awesome stuff last season, but injuries. Can he stay healthy? It was only 24 or 25 innings that Fairbanks threw last year. And of course, you have the usual Tampa Bay chicanery that, that comes with their bullpen. But if he can even get 20 saves, uh, I, I think Pete Fairbanks will pay off a $9 price tag. Jake McCarthy, someone we mentioned the other day, or at least I did, as a, a bust. A player I just don't really find myself winding up with very often. Yeah, I mean, like we talked about it, I think during the bust episode, he's very team build dependent. So, like, where I've got, you know, Randy Rosarena and Bo Bichette and, and Mookie Betts and Fernando Tatis, don't really see a need to get Jake McCarthy, even though, you know, there's a decent chance he ends up being a pretty good buy here. 
Yeah, he's slowing down around eight nine dollars. It seems, even though I don't, I don't like him as much this season. It seems like a pretty good price, relative. And oh, mm. Scotty was in at ten. Mm -hmm. Is he out at twelve? Three, two. I'm not one. He's not out. He's not out yet. He's back in. He's back. He's back in. <laughs> Scott is fired up for a little Jake McCarthy at twelve bucks. Sold. I liked him a lot more at ten. <laughs> uh, would you say roughly 20 percent more roughly yeah about that amount so you you wound up with mullins too right scott so you're you're getting some speed <laughs> um by the way yeah, dan, no, that's, dan that's yes uh, exactly that he, he price enforced you on it i don't know how i knew i wanted him that much well he, he's listening to this not that you were not that you he knew you wanted him but just that he he waited until the last second to to give you a little taste of your own medicine. There. I figured it was either him or Edmund. Like I had how much money to spend. I had, so I still had $18 of that Dalton Varsho fund left over. I went, I had 20 budgeted for Varsho. Two extra went to pass Guantino. Two more than I budgeted for him. Um, and I had another $18 there. Hang on a second. And Brian Reynolds was the player. Out there, Brian Reynolds, right at seventeen. Okay, that's how much he went for. Just want to make sure I didn't miss on a, on a great buy there. Um, so I had eighteen to spend. It was going to be either between McCarthy or Tommy Edmond because I knew I wanted another big base dealer to pair with Mullins. And even though McCarthy at twelve dollars was more than the nine dollars, I think he should go for. Twelve dollars is less than I probably have to spend for Tommy Ed Edmund, and frankly, I need the outfielder more. I think. Well, Scott, speaking of outfield, Alex Kirilov just went for two bucks. Yep, I wouldn't. He's not worth three to me. He's worth two to me, but he was thrown out there for two. So, let me reset here on the podcast and the video side. Uh, we are currently doing a live salary cap draft, also known as an auction. Twelve team five by five roto with two hundred sixty dollar budget. Standard categories and roto style lineups, and we are we're moving along here. We've we're about uh not halfway. I would say hopefully a third of the way through. We're gonna, it's it's going to be a pretty long one here. I'm expecting four ish hours, maybe more than that. Alec Manoa is up to twenty one. Now twenty two. I wonder if people see him as the end of a tier. No, there's still some other pitchers available. Yeah, I think there's, there's uh, Max Breed four or five left in this tier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Luis Castillo, Zach Gallen, Christian Javier. I'll tell you what, Kevin Gosman for 19 versus Manoa for 22. That's that's pretty excellent. Good. I, I, like I prefer Manoa, but straight up, yeah. But if, if I'm telling you, you're getting him for three dollars less, Scott. I, I, I still think I prefer Manoa. Okay, fair enough. I mean, I would take the savings on Gosman personally. Jazz Chisholm is out there. We know one person who will not be bidding on him, and uh, his last name starts with White. <laughs> Uh, Jazz at 25? No. 26. All right, so let me ask you guys. Jazz Chisholm's approaching 30 here. He's at 28 right now. Jazz Chisholm for 28 or Ozzy Albies for 21? Albies, oh, Albies for sure. Albies easily. Because I've got Chisholm ranked a little bit ahead of Albies, but it's only like seven spots total. Uh, they're a couple of bucks in my auction values. So, yeah, right. I think so Albies since, is the best buy there. Since Corey Seager was my biggest overpay at 30, do you prefer Corey Seager for 30 or Jazz Chisholm for 29? Jazz. I have him ranked ahead of Corey Seager. No. Yeah. I wrong. Th I think in Roto, I, I would say the same thing. I'd rather mm -hmm. have Jazz. But it's close. I mean, he'll, give, he'll give half the runs in RBI of Seager because of the amount of time he misses. But he, he will have more steals. I'll give you that much. <laughs> All right. Scott is, Scott's... Scott is out on Jazz and the injuries. Uh, speaking of out, I threw out George Springer. He's up to 17. I had him and uh, Eloy kind of priced at, at a similar range. I got Eloy 18. Well, guess what? Chris has Springer at 18 right now. Will it last? Yes, it will. I'm happy with right that. At this yeah, that's just right around where I've got him for. Yep. Uh, again, I, had, I wrote down three names. Eloy, Springer, and I'm not going to reveal the other one yet. And there he is, Oscar Hernandez. He gets thrown out, very <laughs> next player. So, uh, yeah, I, I all had them all for around $17, $18. So. Yeah, who was the other one? Eloy? 
Eloy Springer and Teoscar. I have them all for around uh, the same price, Chris. Yep. Yeah, I've got them all around the same price as well. I'm trying to. Come on, someone. Somebody bid up Teoscar one more dollar so we can get 18 for each. Ah. All right. He goes for 17. going to be me, Frankie. Not going to be you. All right. Uh -uh. Fair enough. Uh, I'm doing a bad job of realizing if there are any good players left, but I only have four, so I should probably start bidding on some. <laughs> I told you, there's not many players at this point. There's a lot. It's a lot harder than it looks, man. Like, oh, I believe you. I, I do not envy the spot you're in because I don't I don't envy the spot I'm in and I don't have to talk nearly as much as you do. Right. Francisco Lindor gets thrown out there. I don't know. Maybe this is the one. Let's, let's see how much he goes for. Uh, he's up to 17, 18. I am legally prohibited from bidding a on him, so I can take a little break. <laughs> <laughs> and he's slowing down at 22. Francisco Lindor. Boom! The hammer. 23. Will anyone go one more for Frankie? They should. Lund? And, oh, geez, I almost got him. Was that unkind of me to say they should? No, it's it's totally fine. I don't, I don't really want they Lindor. They still should. Yeah, I probably should still go in on him. He's, he's at, Oh, Frank. He goes for 25. Eh, there's still good players left, right, Scott? Mm. <laughs> I don't think so. Not as maybe good I, as Lindor. Maybe I should have went. It was the last. Go get, go get Tommy Edmund, Frank. Ah, I love Tommy Edmund. Actually, yeah, you know, I'm scrolling down. It's, uh, oh, geez. Maybe now, if I want batting average, this is the guy, Stephen Kwan. Give uh, me Kwan. Give yeah. me. Go for the same amount as McCarthy. One more dollar, baby. Man, you're right, Scott. I probably should have went after Lindor. I was, I was telling you. I was right. literally telling you. Yeah, should have done it. Anyway, I mean, so I thought about it at twenty six, and I have like forty one dollars. <laughs> My max <laughs> bid is twenty seven. I couldn't have gone twenty six. <laughs> I mean, you, you literally could have. It would have I, made, I, I it could have made some great content, though. I'll tell you that. Have, <laughs> I would have been tilting the entire rest of the uh, the draft. Stephen Kwan goes for twelve dollars. I did bid on him at eleven, uh, so looking to get a little little batting average and steals from Stephen Kwan. Had a big second half last year. You know, big for Stephen Kwan. Uh, and what you, was it, like four home runs? Uh, no, five, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have the, the top bid on you, Darvish, right now, who's up at 17 and sold. All right. One. Wanted a, a decent SP2 to go along with, with Garrett Cole. And there you go. Got my top two starters, Garrett Cole, you Darvish. Where was I when all the good players were going? I mean, geez. Now you're hosting a podcast. There's none left. <laughs> Framber Valdez. Oh, the enforcer. Framber Valdez went out for one. RJ White jumped the bid to 15. So he's not, he's he's got places to be, you know. He's not trying to sit here and let that clock tick down. I mean, we all have to stick around for the reserve drafts. I don't mean, know. We're all stuck here. We're stuck here till midnight, folks. Framber Val Valdez winds up going for $16, so $1 less than you, Darvish. Eh, it should probably go for around the same price. I think that's fine. Yep. Uh, William Contreras, we've got another catcher out here now in uh, Milwaukee. Of course, brother of uh, Wilson. Breakout season for William Contreras last year. And the stack ass numbers all back it up. I mean... He's yeah. going a little cheaper than MJ Melendez, but if you put stock into the stack house numbers, William Contreras was a lot better than what MJ Melendez last year. Now, Melendez does have the added benefit of likely seeing more time at the DH and, and outfield spots to, you know, he could have 150 plate appearance ad advantage on William Contreras. All right, so I wound up winning William Contreras at $10. Uh, I had budgeted 12 for him, so save a, save a couple bucks. Good, you're going to need This is going to be a fun one, Chris. You ready I for know. this? You're going to need that money, Frank. I know, I need oh, it. Oh, your safety belt. All right, let's go. Ooh. Yeah. Riley, Riley Green, Green is the player that was thrown out. Mm -hmm. And he's up to three. How much did uh, how much did Newbar go for? I think it was like 12, 12. or something. Yeah. I go five. Will Green rival Newbar? Uh, Chris, should I go Seven. It's less than you know. I could drop the hammer. It's hammer time. 
I'm not going to do it. It's, he's all yours, Chris. Thrilled that's with that. That's pretty good. Chris. He's a, I, I know I'm a lot higher on him than the consensus. He's a $10 player for me, but even at six, I think most yeah. people would have that as a pretty good value. Yeah. And I'm, I have one outfield spot left. So there we go. Uh, I have, I have three. I, but you know, I have a lot of spots left. So Kerry Carpenter is <laughs> currently going for three. That's an, an interesting name to be thrown out there. Mm. I was regretting buying him in an AL only league. So, I mean, he had a lot of home runs in the minors last year, but, um, yeah, he's weird. He's, he's one of those guys for sure going to be on the roster. The scouts don't, don't necessarily buy the numbers either. Kerry Carpenter, according to roster resource is penciled in as the strong side platoon at the DH for the Detroit Tigers. Grayson Rodriguez. Is, that, another, is he platooning with Miggy? Uh, I guess so. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I guess Carpenter could play a corner outfield spot as well. Yeah, I'm trying to remember who it was he's supposed to be competing with for an outfield job and drawn a blank. Somebody who who I don't think is very good. Of course, it's the Tigers. Uh, Akil Badu. Yeah. Uh, Badu... Oh, yeah. I- I know Badu has stolen some bases this spring, but overall, I feel like the numbers probably aren't too great for him. Matt Vierling, a name that we haven't mentioned, is having a really big spring for them. So, uh, Grayson Rodriguez wound up going for eight dollars. Could turn out to be pretty good. Yeah, I am. There are a few pitchers like it's so easy to find pitchers that you like at pretty much every point in the draft or at every dollar value that it's sort of hard to like complain that anyone's a good value, but Grayson Rodriguez is a guy I'm surprised hasn't seen his price go up and more than it has. Uh, I think Kodai Senga is another one that I'm, I'm kind of surprised hasn't been priced up more as well. Christian Javier is up to $19. It's a Chris. Chris. I'm always happy when Chris buys somebody who I know he's lower on than the consensus. (laughs) Uh, defending champ Greg Lathrop jumps in 20 bucks for Christian Javier. Yeah, 19. He would have been a very good fit with Justin Verlander for me. So that I would have been happy with that. Unfortunately, didn't happen. That's okay. Yeah, it's a, a little pricey for Javier, but and he's he's one of these helium names right now. He's he's been aggressively yeah. moving up draft boards and he w- he placed very high on that that survey. He was your if must-have he, player. I think he was the fifth highest vote getter. He's one that, like, if he had gone, you know, been nominated for spots earlier, he might have gone for 22. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know. Let's get some of these pitchers off the board. I want to I wanna see some of the good players that are left <laughs> on my ranking list. There's not much. Throughout Luis Castillo at 15, Jeffrey Springs just went for $8. I mean, again, it's... Breakout candidate like Grayson Rodriguez, eight dollars each. They went to, to the same team owner that is Tim Canick and Luis Castillo for eighteen bucks. So I would say of the mid tier guys, Castillo and Gosman are the ones that really stand out for me. Eighteen and nineteen dollars respectively. I like the prices on those two. Yeah, I'm Gallon higher on Gosman. Right G- Gallant's in a similar tier, so he's he's up now. Yep. And I got Darvish at 17, so I, I imagine Gallon will go somewhere in there, 17 to 19 ish. Uh, Gallon price friend, you can get in there yourself. No, no, I mean I got to save some of my money for hitters, Scott. Is mm-hmm. uh, my hitting? Do is you though? A little questionable. Yeah. Uh, Zach Gallon at 13. Nope, not yet. The it was a monster second half for Zach Gallon last year. He was a, a league winner for a lot of people, and. The one thing I worry about him is the BABIP was extremely low last year. He's a 45-ish percent ground ball guy, so I wonder with the shift, the shift restrictions, he's going to regress a little bit, but wonder how much. That, that's my question on Gallon. He, I, I think he's a good pitcher. I, I think he might be a touch overvalued, so I, I don't typically wind up with him in my drafts. And he went for 16, so it's a pretty pretty fair price. All right, yeah. we, we might fi- finish this by the weekend. That's what's being <laughs> said. In the uh, I think he was talking about TGFBI. Oh, all right, fair enough. Uh, someone was rooting for me to do something. Do it, Frank. What was that? Bid on Zach Gallon? Wasn't going to be me. Uh, Ian Hap 
He's out there for four. So that's very cheap. Is it three and a half? I mean, he's going for cheaper than Riley Green. It's a little bit Would more. Would you rather have Ian Happ than I like Riley Green? Because I want it. I, I have Ian Happ ranked higher. Okay. He's what more, are you, Chris? More established contract year for Ian Happ. Versus more, who? More established as mediocre, I would say. Versus who? Riley Green. Ian Happ had a good season last year, Scott. Ian Happ has become a solid player. Uh, I uh, Do I have him ranked ahead of... I have Riley Green ranked ahead, um, so I would rather have Riley Green. Mm -hmm. All right. Ian Happ winds up going for... Ian Happ goes for $5, $1 less than Riley Green. Jose Abreu is the current player that is out and about. Scott, how much did you get Vinny P for? 17. 17. All right, so that will be the, the barometer here on Jose Abreu, who I obviously love. I've always loved him. Now he's with the Astros. Go you going to go one more, Scott? Should I go one more, or should I let you get him? It's up to you. No, I'll go one more. That's it, though. I'm done. All right, Frank, probably going to get Jose Abreu for 14 unless anybody else out there wants to get in on the action. Frank, you can't take it with you when we go. Boom! So I wrote down uh, Jose Abreu and Vinny P. Baby! As my first baseman for 15 to 17, and I get Abreu for 14. So pretty good. I like it. And we are, okay. Uh, Robbie Ray is the next player up. Robbie Ray. Where do you guys think Jose Abreu bats in the Astros lineup? Because they're obviously loaded. Uh, I would guess up. four. Clean up, yeah. But, I mean, they're going to lead off Altuve. Fifth. Altuve. Fifth is what roster resource has. Fifth. Yeah. Yeah. Probably makes sense. Bregman at three. Jordan at four. Good RBI spot. Yeah. And hmm. then Jose Abreu at five. And Chris just won Robbie Ray at 13. All right, Chris, back to back. You and, you and me. Winners. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that one. Let's uh let's throw this guy out there. A lot of strikeouts for sure. Yes, which I may need with, with Justin Verlander as my ace. You know, he's gonna get a decent amount of strikeouts, but maybe not the elite, elite strikeout numbers. Robbie Ray went for 13. It'll be interesting to see how much Hunter Green goes for right after him. Hunter Green will be the opening day starter for the Reds. No surprise there. I think it was probably between him and Nick Lodolo. I think I'm pretty much down to even $3 bids, guys. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I Did think you... I'm down to the scrubs part of the stars and scrubs. <laughs> yeah, unless you I just find 15 just roster find... spots left in $41. So, I mean, I could I could push it 8 to $10 on somebody who I think is just a perfect fit or going for too little. But mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, I, I think... We're in the end game now. <laughs> Very nice, Scott. Um, did you actually want to bray you, or were you just pricing me up? No, he was one of those players who I thought uh, was worth really stretching myself thin for. Good bat, power, and RBI production. Scott, adjust your mic again because it's it's cutting out a little bit. John Carlos Stanton goes for ten dollars. Chris, come on, man. Yeah, he's good. That's <laughs> fine. I actually like that would be my last outfielder. And I just, I don't, I don't necessarily think, you know, I could use one big power bat, but I, I think that's probably, I'm okay passing on him. Fair enough. Tommy Edmond is the player thrown out right now, has a second and shortstop eligibility. I believe he's on record saying he wants to steal 40 bases this season. You believe accurately with the new rules. I think it's possible. Tommy Edmond stole 30 last year. More than 30, potentially. Was it more than 30? Pulling up his page. Uh, I believe he's 30 plus two years in a row now, right? Yeah. 30 that's... and 32, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Incredible position as well. Which reminds me, I should probably bid on him. It's exactly you what should. I did. <laughs> I, was, I think the bidding should keep going, frankly. But um, By the yeah, way, did either one of you guys money. stay up and watch that Korea, South Korea, Australia game last night? Uh, I had it on kind of in the background, but but I wasn't paying much attention. What happened in it, Chris? Very, very intense at the end. Uh, Australia went up, I think, 8-4. Korea had a three-run inning where Australia just could not find the strike zone, and they ended up just falling short. Really big upset in that bracket, and 
puts a lot of pressure on South Korea because Japan's coming out of that bracket. But now they lost to Australia, so they they kind of need to beat Japan to have a chance. It's going to be tough. So looking back earlier, uh, remember I, I I went two dollars more on Jake McCarthy, got him for twelve, thinking, well, it's either him or Tommy Edmond. Tommy Edmond's going to go for twelve. Tommy Edmond did go for more than twelve, but for only fourteen to Frank, I, I think that was I think that was a good deal. Say it again, Scott. Which one was? Are you saying Edmund was a good deal or the player? Yeah, the Edmund for 14 versus my McCarthy for 12. I mean, just in a vacuum, Edmund for 14 was a good deal. Right. And I'm not even the biggest, you know, Tommy Edmund supporter, but you look at my team, what I have so far, and I've got Machado, Tucker, Eloy, Abreu, William Contreras. I've got, I would say, a decent batting average, good amount of power, probably needed another steel guy. So that's why yeah. I wound up uh, going in on Manny, uh, on Tommy Edmund, excuse me. And I won him for 14. Oscar Colos went for four. Logan Ohapi went for a four. So a couple of prospects going off the board. Someone threw out Colos for two. I went three, uh, and then he went to four. I wasn't willing to go to for, for uh, to five for Oscar Colos. Yeah, I was hoping to get him for two or three. He was one of those late round, late end game targets. I was penciling in, but alas, sometimes they get thrown out too early, and then they're for sure going to go for more than two or three. Tim Anderson is currently being thrown out and all right, we're going on a spending spree boys. I've got Tim Anderson. I went him for 13. So I spent up for Machado Tucker and Garrett Cole. And, and now I'm kind of just living in the mid tier, which I don't, which is what you said you wanted to do, right? I typically, I typically do this. Um, I wanted to spend up a little bit more. I think Lindor is probably the one I'll regret not getting, but I like Tim Anderson a lot. I, I like the price point. Good amount this season. Uh, okay, so I am down to... Yeah, for what it's worth, I think Tim Anderson's going to have a bounce-back season. He's one of the guys who I think could potentially really benefit from the stolen base rules. I know injuries have been a big concern for him over the years, but he's always had the elite base stealing, or the, the elite speed that his stolen bases don't necessarily lead you to believe he has. I, I could see him running more. All right, Tim Anderson, I got for 13. Chris, you got Jorge Polanco for seven. It's a good price. I, I wrote him down for, for eight to 10 myself, but I already got Tommy Edmund. So you just nominated Max Fried, Frank? Yes, I did. The last of the high end, definitively high end pitchers, I would say. The, the next best available is Tristan McKenzie. Yep. So that might push up Fried price. Is it 18 now? Yeah, there's a lot Which of good is, relievers left, but the starting pitcher pool is definitely thinned out. And my plan was to to throw Max Freed out because I've already got Cole and Darvish. I know I don't want to spend up for another, you know, top ish tier starter, and, and so that's why I, I wanted to get some money off the board. Max Freed went for 19, which is actually a dollar less than I had before, so he didn't his price it's didn't a, get forced up. It's a fair value. Yeah, Hunter Renfro. Well, he is. Um, He's not a two or three dollar player, so so you know I'm out. So you know Scott's out. <laughs> That's exactly. I could go six for him. Uh, not if I go first, Scott. No, not if you go first. I could go seven for him. <laughs> you can. Will you though? And then he's all yours. <laughs> and, That's a pretty good yeah, should have. And he no, and he won't. And I'll take. Uh, no. I like Hunter Renfro. I get him for six bucks. Spend the money, like Chris said. I can't take it with me, right? So. That's where we're at. Oh, Devin Williams. Speaking of it, Chris, it's been a while since we've seen one of these elite, elite closers go. Yeah, and there hasn't really, there haven't really been any values among the closers, but there haven't really been any like wild overpaid either. It's been pretty right down the middle for the for the closers. I am not I think, the biggest. I, mean, I think relative to how early Devin Williams would go in a draft I don't I don't think it's the $13 range That's a good uh, price know, for him. That's what he went for Yeah I was going to say I've, I've got him for 15 I'm not necessarily in on Devin Williams I have some concerns with him but when he goes $2 less than Felix Bautista who's currently not healthy I think that is a good yeah. price for Devin Williams Yeah It is I I'm just I'm not in a position to spend 14 on a closer Right, and that and that's the sort of thing that could happen. Like, I mean, I mean, there may be other people who didn't budget for one either, and so 
while they while they may have been inclined to take him in a draft when their turn came up, um, the flexibility of the salary cap draft kind of pushes them out of the closer market. And I, I I've seen that actually with every single salary cap draft we've done, they tend to go for less than their ADP would suggest they should go for. Mm-hmm. Nate Lowe is the player that's currently out there for 11. It's been a real slow burn for him too. He slowed down around six. I went in at seven. I went in again at nine, uh, but getting him up to a point where I think he should go. So $11, I think that's fine for Nate Lowe. Let's take our another break here and we'll be back on Fantasy Baseball today. Italy's best clubs and brightest stars bring show-stopping skills and unbelievable thrills in the fight to the finish for the Scudetto. Stream every Serie A match live on Paramount+. Plus. Welcome back into Fantasy Baseball today. Another one of those closers being thrown out there. The top tier, Rysel Iglesias. And he goes to me you. for 15. 15. All right. So does that Do you like Rysel Iglesias more than Devin Williams? I do, yes. Okay. So 15 for Iglesias, 13 for Williams. I mean, even if you didn't, sometimes you can just go that way. I think they're all in a similar tier. So, yeah. I mean, again, just... Price wise, I, I think Devin Williams was the better buy. But uh, mm-hmm. if I could get Rysel Iglesias for the same price as Batista went earlier, uh, I'll do that. I wanted at least one surefire closer, and I get yeah. that with Iglesias, who once he joined the Braves last season was phenomenal. And now he'll be their, their closer heading into the season. We've got a little bit of a relief pitcher run. David Bednar goes for all right, seven bucks. That's pretty good value. Half the price. Yeah, I wanted to see if I could s- sneak like a a next tier closer in for a couple of bucks and Bednar wasn't the right option. All right. Jonathan India thrown out. Looks like he'll be the leadoff man for the Reds as he has been all spring training. And I think I read somewhere that he wants to run more this season as well. And you're in on the bidding. You hopped in right as he said that. Yeah. I I like Jonathan India. I've I'm on. I'm on record with that. He was He's dealing with a hamstring injury all of last season. I, I think it really slowed him down. I think he can get back to 18 to 20 homers, double-digit steals in a, a really good ballpark in Cincinnati. I just like that we're watching real time as you talk yourself into players. <laughs> <laughs> no, this, this is part of the plan, Scott. I, I had I had him written down for uh, for middle infield. So Okay. But, uh, uh, yeah. Let's do this. The multitasking of throwing a... <laughs> Analyzing a player while you're bidding on him is, is fun. All right. Masataka Yoshida. Mm. Now, our good friend from the other day. What was his name again? I remembered his Neil. name on the other podcast. Neil. Neil. Oh. Yes. Neil made some compelling arguments for Masataka Yoshida. Um. Liking him mostly for batting average, as I think we all do. What what gets me with him is like, you know he's not going to steal bases. So if there's no power there either, what are we talking about? We're talking about Luis Arias at best. Except he plays the outfield, which is better. Mm-hmm. So maybe more like Jeff McNeil. Yeah. But anyway, that's the best case scenario for Yoshida. Yoshida goes for six. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with Yoshida, I, I I don't know that we could expect... I think he could probably get to double digits. I mean, he was around 20 in Japan. You know, maybe he gives us 10 to 12. Obviously, it's a little Almost. bit tougher to hit home runs as a lefty in, in Fenway. So, mm-hmm. um, But I think he could be like 10 to 12 homers, 270-plus batting average. Much better in OBP or, or head-to-head points leagues. Gunnar Henderson, this is... Yeah, my highest-ranked hitter that's left. Uh, and... I'm sure someone out there needs a third baseman. So, yeah, I would guess it's the highest ranked header for all three of us, right? Yep. Yeah. Very interested to see how much. This is one of those players where you could just see going for way over value just because he's like the best hitter available. He's a weak position. He gives you steals. He's, right. you know, buzzy as a rookie of the year candidate. Oof. And he's up to $19 now, which isn't a, you know, that's pretty much on point for me. Yeah, Scott, you $1 have dollar more. You have Gunnar Henderson at 18 in your rankings. I have him at 16, Chris at 14. How, 
Corbin Carroll went for 20 something, right? 23. Okay. So, all right. That's about right. I, I think that's, that's probably the right it, price for Gunnar. It Henderson. does feel like Corbin Carroll has more helium right now. Oh yeah. So Brendan Donovan just got thrown out for a dollar. Brendan Donovan with his triple eligibility, second, third outfield. And I imagine he's going to be the first dollar player. Yes, he is. Right? We didn't have another? I don't believe so. And it pretty looks, much batting average help. That's Donovan about it. might lead off against right handed pitching. Okay. So maybe he could be, maybe he could excel decently and run scored as well. Yep. I'm looking at my roster trying to figure kind out kind of a specialist what I need. Maybe some more power. We'll see. Sean Murphy, I won William Contreras at 11. I feel like those guys are <laughs> tied by uh, at the hip. They were traded for each other. And I feel like whenever you see one go, the other one usually goes not long after that. So, <laughs> oh, this is a great price. Wow. Sean Murphy. What did Contreras go for? I, I got him for 11. And I felt good about that. I mean, Contreras, I'm sure I have him as like a 13 or $14 player. The 10 and Sean Murphy goes for eight. Yeah. It's a good price. Yeah, I've got Murphy at 12. Went for eight bucks, but yeah, I don't I don't really want to spend for a second catcher. I've already got Contreras. Much rather have Murphy at eight. Cody Bellinger is up five bucks. I know he's hit a few home runs here in the spring. Chris, it feels like last year we were all just like completely out on Bellinger. Do you do you have any hope on the bounce back? Uh <sighs> Nothing but hope. There, there's certainly nothing specific or concrete that I could point you to 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 be optimistic about it. It's just this is a guy who at one point was super talented, and maybe he can be talented again. But no, I, I don't feel uh, any amount of uh, optimism about him at this point. Cody Bellinger now with the Chicago Cubs. And ooh, Jordan Romano was about to go for 14. He did not. Uh, Cody Bellinger was working out with Matt Holiday this offseason, somebody who has helped other major leaguers get their their swing and their careers back on track. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, he can do the same for Bellinger. Didn't he work with Matt Carpenter last year? Yep, that's correct. Jordan Romano goes for 15, same price as Rysel Iglesias. So, not really getting much of a discount on closers. Outside of Bednar, I think Bednar is pretty good at seven. Um. Yeah. Gosh, a lot of people have no money left. I, I'm thinking I'm in the poor house here, but I'm not the worst off. No, you are not. Uh, I don't even, I can't see how much money I have left here. Let's, what do we got? I'm at 28. Ah, all right. So I've got a one more dollar higher max bid than Scott. So if we get into a war, I'm not going win. max bid on anybody. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think there's that's, any player worth That's not the way Stars and Scrubs works. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not going to work that way. Uh, Tyler O'Neill is sold for $14. Someone that we've expressed some pessimism about recently. The Cardinals are just so loaded, man. They're outfield. They've got Lars Newtbar. They still have Carlson there. Looks like Jordan Walker is going to make the team. Nolan Gorman could DH. They've got Juan Yapez. Tyler O'Neill's injury prone. I think there's still a good amount of upside there, but a lot of downside as well. Yeah, I, I did add uh, Tyler O'Neill to my bus 2.0. Um, I just, I think there are more ways for things to go wrong for him than right. And uh, mm. we've only seen it go right for him once. Like he has to be, because of how much he swings and misses and because he's had pretty serious injury concerns, he needs to be exceptional in quality of contact, not just good. And I'm not sure you can rely on that. Scott, were you in on the bidding for Tristan McKenzie who went for $11? Oh, I kind of feel like I should have been. He went for $11. Um, yeah. Need a number two still. And he certainly, look, I mean, the guy had a sub two, a sub three ERA, 190 Ks, a sub one whip last year. He's pretty good. I mean, for $11, yeah, it's, it's, it would have put me in a really desperate spot, but it may have been worth it. We'll see what some of the other, because there, there, there's still a lot of pretty good pitchers out there. So uh, none as good as McKenzie, who was the highest one left. 
but you know, I'd, I'd rather have a couple $6 guys than an $11 guy, given the, the build of my team. So we'll see. I just got Anthony Rizzo for $7 and I really went on quite the spending spree. I've only got four hitter spots left to fill two outfielders utility and my second catcher. Kenley Jansen is starting out there and he's up to seven bucks. I'm trying to figure out on the fly what this team needs. <laughs> it's not going very well. Uh, Kenley Jansen is up to 11. It's Greg Lathrop, our defending champion. Scott, you got one more dollar in you? No, I don't. Ah! Do All right. Yeah, if I can't do it for McKenzie, I can't do it for Jansen. The discipline. That's what it takes. Like it, I'm, I'm much less concerned about discipline in the early game than I am in the late game. All righty. Chris, you're up to nominate a player. I feel like you've just been throwing out $2 players for, for a long while now. Yeah, going to continue in that trend, although this is one I may be able to get for a dollar. We have no idea if Liam Hendricks is going to pitch this season, obviously coming back from the non-Hodgkin's lymphoma diagnosis, but he was in uh, camp with the White Sox recently through a bullpen session. So, you know, we'll see. RJ White took him for two. Hard to justify a $3 bid on a player who just, we have no idea if he's going to play this season, but one really really hoping that it happens uh and two you know still a chance that he comes back and is the white Sox closer for a decent stretch yeah absolutely rooting for liam Hendricks to get back on track with everything he's dealt with this offseason but we we just don't really know and from a fantasy perspective obviously he's just someone you're gonna have to leave on your bench for the entire season uh until well he should be il you should be able to put him on the il i would guess i don't is that true? Does, does baseball have like a non? Because I know the NFL has like a non-football injury, but they just have the IL, right? I I, th I would imagine he's on the the IL. He's not going to be on like the restricted list or anything. You might be right about that. It, that's uh, that's a fair point. Yeah, Liam Hendricks. Yeah, Scott, you yeah, think he'll be on the IL? He'll go on the IL. All right. Yeah. So look for two dollars. We've yeah, we have five IL spots in this league. So that was the thought process there. I thought about throwing him out for two. I thought I could sneak, sneak him through for one. All right. Nice little strategy. Clayton Kershaw goes for $10. Uh, Tristan McKenzie not too long ago went for 11 So similar price points for those two. Yeah, those Is this are Sean Murphy? No, it's Sean Manaya. <laughs> that was last year's snafu. For anyone who watched or listened to the podcast last year, towards... The end game, Scott was saving all of his money for. Remind me which one, Scott. It was actually Sean Manaya who I wanted. Okay, and you wound up yeah. bidding on Sean Murphy. Right. I saw. I saw Worked Sean M. Oakland. They were both on Oakland at the time, <laughs> and yeah. I was like, "Oh, that's the guy." And I, I think the bidding was had ended by the time you guys clued me in to the fact that it was the wrong Sean M. <laughs> And Scott for my so utility spot, because part of my strategy last year was Salvador Perez, Dalton Varsho for my catcher spot. So I filled those early and I had an open utility spot and I ended up filling it yeah. with Sean Murphy, who it turns out was better than Sean and I, of course. But at the time, <laughs> it did not feel that way. Sure did. Yeah. Scott was so angry. I've never seen him <laughs> that upset before. We wouldn't <laughs> let him roll it back. We were like, right. no, you got to. I mean, that's the thing. Room. Like I've. I've that's that's not the first time a name mix up has happened like that. And if somebody points it out right away, I always roll it back. So it just felt like, you know, you guys are you guys were sticking it to me for no good reason. Yeah, we're we're jerks. I, I, I will fully admit <laughs> sucks, that sucks to suck. You're you're just a better <laughs> human than I am, Scott. Uh Sean Manaya. <laughs> I almost said Murphy now. My brain is messed up. Five dollars for Sean Manaya, then one buck for Christian Vasquez as a second catcher. Max Muncy goes for eight. I'll tell you what. Yeah, I got, I I got was, Rizzo at seven. I think I, I would have rather, rather spent that extra dollar on Max Muncy. I was telling that Sean M story and <laughs> dragging my feet, getting to look up what I had Muncy for. Mm. 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 I have him for 15. I'm pretty high on him. He goes for eight. Right. Blake Snell. Blake Snell is the next one thrown out here. Contract year. And uh, made some adjustments in the second half, and uh, he was he's pretty awesome. So I'm going to be in here, try and get Blake Snell as my SP three. Got the leading bid for eight bucks. And let's see if I can hold on. Boom, got him. 
All right. Well, I've got Cole, Darvish, and Snell. A lot of strikeouts. Feel good about it. Christian Yelich, next up. Or not for seven dollars. All right, all right. Christian Yelich just kind of feels, I guess, boring is the right way to describe him. A 15 15 hitter, 260 to 270 batting average. That's what I, I'm expecting. I would say he is a high floor, high ceiling player at this point because I do still believe, and I've said this multiple times, I do still believe that there's a chance that he gets back to being not a 50 homer pace guy, but a 25 homer guy. And if he does that, I think the, the ceiling is going to be very high as a, you know, legitimate five category guy or, or maybe four category guy. All right. Christian Yelich went for 11. I won Snell for eight. As we talked about, I threw out Ryan Helsley. I've already got my top closer in Russell Iglesias. It's not my top ranked closer, but a top closer that I wanted on my team. So I threw Helsley out there to get some money off the table. And took Scott, some of my money, Frank. Scott, you just won another one of your busts. <laughs> I know. I know. But hey, I mean, relative to the other save sources, Helsley for $8. I'm not going not gonna to complain about that. I was, I was beginning to worry I might not get any saves. And uh, that would have been a difficult way to start. But now I'm legitimately down to 2 or $3 bids. I can't splurge anymore. Jose Miranda goes for... Two bucks. That's one of those, Scott, where even even though we might be a little bit lower on Miranda, I mean, if you could get him for two or three bucks. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty yeah. good one. Seems like a good deal. Lance Lynn is the next one thrown out. And uh, I like Lance Lynn too, but having just one Blake Snell, I could already say I will not be in on the bidding for Lance Lynn. So, Chris, I'm rooting for you, bud. I hope you get him. I would say that uh, Miranda bid two dollars. That's the sort of pl like when when we're in the end game, I go three dollars on the players I really want, and two dollars on the players I just kind of want. And Miranda is one of those players I just kind of want. So somebody getting to two dollars before I get a chance to get to two dollars basically just puts me out. Lance Lynn went for eight. Chris, you were in on the bidding, but not willing to go nine, huh? No, I mean my max bid is what thirty. So it's just. I, I I don't think it's a, enough upside there for me to, to lock in such a significant portion of, of my budget. Gotcha. Lance Lynn, when he first returned from his knee injury, first five or six starts back last year, didn't look right. The numbers were awful. And then from that point forward, he was awesome. We're talking like two and a half ERA, sub one whip, really good strikeout numbers. He had a career high swinging strike rate last year. So Lance Lynn and Snell, I think those are, that's kind of the, that's the package duo. I want one of those guys as my SP3 in pretty much all of my drafts. That, that's, that's what I've been working with so far. Reese Hoskins went for eight to Chris. All right. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I think I'd rather have Reese Hoskins than Lance Lynn, who I just said I wouldn't go $8 for or $9 for. So mm -hmm. I'm okay with it. Yeah, I'll, I'll say it again. I got Rizzo for seven. I, I like Hoskins. A decent, eh, a little bit more. So I think I think that's a good price. Oh man, Wilson Contreras went for eleven. I paid eleven for his brother. <laughs> Thanks. Sibling rivalry. Don't love that. Do not love it. Carlos Estevez, Chris, did you throw him out for three? Yes, I did. I I meant to do two. Oh well. <laughs> Are you expecting him to be the front runner? <laughs> In, yes, uh, Anaheim. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping he'll be the closer for the Angels. Yes, he has looked awful this spring. Yes, he has. For whatever it's worth, and it may not be worth much, but he has been walking everybody in sight. Yep. Another closer up off the board here, Alexis Diaz with the Reds has been named the team's closer. So we'll be interested to see how much. Yeah, he goes I like him for, for five. Him. If that's what RJ gets him for, and he did. It's a great price. Yeah, maybe Hell's Liquor it wasn't so great. I just yeah. want all the best buys, you know? <laughs> can't just accept a kind of good buy. It never works out that way. You know, that's good. Never of... does. All right. Let's see here. 
Uh, let me try. Let me try Andrew Painter. See if mm. see if I'll get him for a dollar, or if the enthusiasm is still enough that somebody wants him for more. Somebody yep, wants him. Went up more. for two. That's fine. I, it, that's the sort of player I I'm happy to get for a dollar, but I only want him for a dollar. So that, that is. Uh, one dollar per opinion that he's getting on the health of his elbow. Yeah. <laughs> Two dollars. Yeah. That's right. As of now, for Andrew Painter, it doesn't look like he'll need surgery, but I'd imagine likely to start the season on the IL. Bailey Falter in it as the fifth starter to open the season. Jake Fraley. Ah, that's one of Scotty's guys. One of those two or three buck bashes. Let's see if it works. Boom. It did. I'll take nice, it, Scotty. Nice little get on uh, Jake Fraley. Do you expect him to play every day or a strong side platoon? What's your thought? I mean, I'm hoping every day. Uh, if if Christian Encarnacion, this is a point that we didn't bring up with the well. Oh, well, that's a podcast you guys haven't listened to yet because we recorded it out of order. All right. So I, I do think if Christian Encarnacion Strand, who's making a lot of headway this spring, makes the roster and forces Will Myers to the outfield, that could actually impede on Jake Fra Fraley's playing time. So it's kind of a, a two sleeper squaring off situation for me. But at worst, Fraley is strong side platoon and probably batting leadoff when he is starting. And I expect him to run a lot more than last year. Uh, I expected him to run last year when he did play. It didn't happen, but now it's easier to run. And and he looked great in Cincinnati once he came back from that injury midseason. He had like an OPS. I think it was over 900 from, uh, you know, basically over the final two, two and a half months. All right. That was uh, Jake Fraley. Scott was talking about Carlos Correa in the meantime goes for 11. There's still a few more strong shortstops out there. We'll be interested to see who has the money left, who has we, the hammer to drop it down. We have reached the point where uh, pretty much all the top remaining players on my rankings are either pitchers or shortstops or actually second baseman. A couple, couple of good second basemen left. Yep, that's exactly right. I've got one catcher up there as well, but somebody that I think I'm a little bit higher on than you guys. Camilo Duvall is up for seven. Chris currently has him. Reminder, Alexis Diaz went for five. And Scott, you got Ryan Helsley at what, eight? Yep. All right, so $1 so, less. Fine for relative to Duvall, but yeah. I, I mean, I would have rather had $5 Alexis Diaz given my money situation. Uh, so more on Fraley. Okay, so we returned July 30, 30th. And looking at Lodolo here. Okay, so Lodolo goes for seven. I tried to get in on, on Lodolo at eight, and I just was too indecisive. I have him at nine. How much did Ry Hunter Green go for? 10 or 11? 11, 11, yeah. Yeah, I definitely prefer Lodolo for seven to Green for 11. Uh, okay, Andres Jimenez here. I think this is the best remaining hitter. Yep. And well, I think him like... and Willie Adamas are the two best for me. Right. And Andres Jimenez is up to 12 right now. It's a good price. Yeah, it's very good. Will he get it? I and mean, there's not a lot of money left out there is the thing. I got Edmund. Okay, for it's four. going up a little more. I got Edmund for this exact price. Who would you guys rather have, Edmund or Jimenez? Edmund. Not by much, but. Yeah. You could play him at shortstop. He's more of a category standout, we think. I mean, Andres Jimenez could become a 30 steel guy with the new rules. He's fast enough. He had 20 steals last year. Uh, we're, I, I, I kind of worry his batting average is going to regress more to the Edmund range. But I, I think they're pretty similar. Edmund just more of a surefire source of steals, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, Jimenez has a little more pop. Okay, so back to Fraley real quick give you the exact number so he's already stolen three bases this spring and after he returned from injury july 30th last year 295 with 11 homers and 903 ops so that's that's the source of my enthusiasm there all right that was for jake fraley jimenez went for 14 anthony santander goes for six adolo chris mentioned earlier went for seven uh, i got snell at eight 
So, you got uh, Renfro for six, right? So yeah, same I got there, right in line with that. Which I think makes sense, right, Scott? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Brandon Marsh got thrown out for a dollar. Probably going to go for. Probably going to go. Probably going to start in center field at least against right-handed pitching. Could eh, now that Matt Veerling isn't there anymore, probably going to play every day. I'd imagine. Uh, Brandon Marsh with the Phillies. So I haven't looked at Doug Rose's team, but maybe he went stars and scrubs as well. Might just be uh, the types of players that he needs at this point. He's got Yelich, Trout, Bogarts, Devers, Albies, Alonzo. Yeah, he might he might need some cheap buys at this point. Uh, the draft is suspended. Scott, are we taking a break? No, we're not. Um, I'm just trying to deal with an issue here somebody's having with the draft room. Oh, all right, fair enough. Yeah, I wasn't reading the chat. Yeah, it won't let you nominate a player if you don't have a spot up for them on your roster. And Dan Richards has first base, second base, corner infield, mid middle infield, and utility list filled along with outfield. So presumably he's trying to nominate someone from one of those. In the meantime, let me remind everybody, not that you need the reminder, that it is a great time of year. Spring training, baseball, world baseball classic, and of course, college basketball. The madness brackets are back. Compete against Scott, Chris, and me in our FBT March Madness bracket on the CBS Sports app. All you have to do is scan the QR code in the top right corner of the screen if you're watching us on YouTube or click on the link in the podcast or YouTube description, cbssports.com slash baseball to join after you join our bracket, make sure to run men's and women's pools with friends and family for the chance to win a new car and trips to the 2024 Final Four. Play today on the CBS Sports app or visit cbssports.com slash play to sign up. No purchase necessary. See terms and rules for details. While I was chatting, Yohan Duran went for $5 and Clay Holmes is currently up to $5 as well. Up to yeah, went now up to six. Up to six. Uh, so uh, let me think here. Yeah, I totally forgot the point I was going to make. Was it about carry on? One of the relievers? Is that what it's about? I don't remember. If I think of it, I'll bring it up. Fair enough. All right. So uh, Duran will be a nice little measuring stick there for Andres Munoz. Oh, I remember. <laughs> So what? looking at Dan Richards' roster just now, I happen to notice he has three catchers. So That's one, one, one of the, the utility spot. Yeah. yeah. All right. Interesting. Very interesting, interesting choice. He uh, didn't get as upset about it as when I did it with Sean Murphy last year, <laughs> to his credit. But I would say that that probably wasn't his plan. Because, you know, catchers, by the nature of the position, aren't going to be able to compete with um, other other options for that utility spot in terms of uh, the counting on RBI. Chris Sale, someone who's gaining some helium this offseason, uh, made a spring training debut the other day. Apparently, he was sitting 94 to 96 with a fastball. Looks healthy for now. Cross your fingers. $10 to Chris Towers. Yeah, that was one where I probably should have just let him go, but I want him. I've got him on a bunch of teams. I'm really, really high on him. So. I paid a couple extra dollars and I otherwise would have liked to, although I do have him as a $14 player. It's just at this point in the draft leaves me pretty limited in my options moving forward. All right. Brandon Lau, while we were chatting it up, went for five bucks. Yeah, one really, really good price. If you need pop from your middle infield spot. Yeah. Like that's one that I, I wrote about Jordan Walker. And, you know, how high can I move Jordan Walker? And I've got Brandon Lau ranked higher than the consensus. He's like 120-ish for me. And, like, Jordan Walker's got all kinds of upside. We have seen Brandon Lau have a 250 average, 38 homers, and I think 10 steals in a season. So, like, Jordan Walker probably doesn't have that much more upside than that. So that's that's kind of the point in the draft where, like, it would be hard for me to to move Walker up if he does start to, you know, lock in that. Uh, roster spot scott you tried to sneak uh evan phillips by for a dollar and he went for two the last mm -hmm. i saw it sounds like uh daniel hudson will not be ready to start the season mm -hmm. yep and if that's the case I, I you know evan phillips could be the closer to start the year 
Oh, and he could be a great one if he is. I, I don't I don't think the Dodgers are that interested in having a singular closer. But it's obviously not a bad gamble for two. I kind of wonder if um if I should have saved him for later in, instead of trying to sneak him through for a dollar. It's that you know, I was saying the perfect guys to at to nominate right now in my situation are ones that you'll be happy to take for a dollar, but not anymore. And I, Phillips, I might have been happy to take for two. So mm-hmm. it, it may have been a poor choice for me. I, li- I liked what beat on there did more. Eric Koss for a dollar. I still have two catcher openings, I mm-hmm. believe. Yes. And I think Eric Koss is one people are sleeping on. He is the Tigers' primary catcher this year. Uh, finished very strong last year. He hit 22 home runs two years ago, 14 home runs last year. Like he's, you know, for, for a number two catcher, very solid choice. Yeah, I know he's smacked some home runs so far in the spring as well. That's Eric Haas we're talking about. And a two-catcher league is your second catcher. Some cheap pop. I think he's totally fine. And uh, while you were talking, Scott, Ezekiel Tovar went for six. I know that you were in on the bidding. Yep. Um, and I think that's probably the right price for an interesting upside type middle infielder. Um, yeah, sorry. They're I'm, I'm kind of distracted by the chat room banter. It seems <laughs> like somebody not, didn't mean to go six on Tovar. Uh, but I, I, Tovar was one somebody I was hoping to get for like three or four, not six, just given his ADP going out. Or I think he goes outside the top two of 25. And I think he's maybe the most undervalued player because of that. Cause I think he has five category potential in Colorado. Somebody's on autopilot here. I need to take them off. Okay. So, um, yeah, let me do with this. Let me make sure. Yeah, fair enough. Scott was talking about Ezekiel Tovar went for six. In the meantime, Willie Adamas went for nine, which at this point, you're just going to wind up getting a, a bunch of players who, like any mid-tier player that has talent, probably going to go for cheaper than they should have because there's just, not a lot of money left. Yeah, I mean, you look around and like the max bid for most teams is in the teens to 20s. There's one team with 28, uh, but they have 11 roster spots left. There's one team with 19. They've got three roster spots. So, you know, a little more flexibility on that one. Kyle Wright is currently going and the latest news on him, uh, it sounds like he could appear in a spring training game as soon as next week. He's been dealing with the shoulder, had a cortisone shot back in January, uh, but he's slowly ramping up. If As long as he could get a few starts in in spring, I think he'll be good for the start of the season. And by good, I mean active. You know, Maybe they'll limit his pitch count early, but... Yeah. Um, he's he's had some interesting comments too about this shoulder, the cortisone shot. He says it's better than it's felt in years, and he has more extension on his arm now because of it. Kyle Wright, and he thinks his fastball will play up better because the way he was having to deliver it before, it put kind of a cut on the fastball uh, and made it less of a swing in this pitch. So, I, I mean, I hear that, and it's reason to feel optimism for Kyle Wright, but it's also like, okay, but if you're extending your arm further, then they, that's that's a big new variable that opens up the door to all kinds of possibilities, not all of them good, right? Yes. Yeah. That's, that's one of those things that like you prefer to hear that a player who has talent, but hasn't lived up to it is changing things than a, than a player who has succeeded. You know, it, it's not entirely like Cody Ballinger a few years ago, but it's sort of like that. And then it's also like, generally speaking, we don't hear, we don't think of like a cortisone injection in a shoulder as a good thing. And so it's like, well, he feels good now because of the effects of the cortisone, but once that wears off, you know, how, how is that going to play out? Mm-hmm. And that was Kyle Wright that we were talking about. In the meantime, Nestor Cortez went for eight, $1 more than Kyle Wright. Daniel Bard went for six to Greg Lathrop. So Greg has now won back-to-back players and we've got a fun one out. George Kirby for many people is, He's polarizing. You know, many people think that he could break out this year. He obviously has impeccable control. I think us on this podcast, we're still trying to figure out where the whiff's going to come from, the swinging, mm-hmm. swinging strikes for 
George Kirby, he's still young enough where it wouldn't surprise me one bit if you know he develops some kind of slider yeah. or a sweeper or something to, to get those I wins. Mean, he, but... he, just by virtue of he is George Kirby, he's yeah. a breakout candidate, right? Mm -hmm. It's just I wish I saw a clearer path to it than yep. just relying on the fact he's George Kirby. That's kind of how I feel about Logan Gilbert. I, I have a I can see a straighter path there with uh with Kirby than I can with Gilbert, which is why Gilbert's more of a bust for me now at his price. But both of them, it's sort of just like well, they were highly ranked prospects and they're both young. So they're gonna take a step forward, but it's like what that step forward looks like is actually kind of hard to, to see for me. Scott, you wound up with uh, Lucas Giolito for three bucks. So yeah, I got a second starting pitcher, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got him in uh, Sandy Alcantara. Yeah, do you have I like that's one that gives me strikeouts? I mean, hopefully, hopefully he rebounds in the, <laughs> with the ERA and the WHIP. Yeah, yep. or else I'm not going to want to start him for those strikeouts. And your only other pitcher is Sandy Alcantara, one of the best. And Ryan Helsley, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, close cool. it. In the meantime, Ryan McMahon went for three. It's one of those players that he's just kind of boring. But when you look up at the end of the season, he pays off his five to seven dollars in terms of auction value. And he winds up as like a top 150 player just by virtue of playing being half there. Of his, half of his games being in Colorado. Yeah. And 250, 20 homers, six, seven steals. It's it's boring, but he gets it done. All right, it looks like we are in a break here on the draft side of things. So here's what we'll do. We'll take uh, one more break on the podcast side. And when we get back, we'll take a look at our teams in the intermission. Those players bracing for Amen Corner at the Masters have nerves of steel. Yeah, well, that's what it takes to cut through the fire, buddy. It's a tradition unlike any other. The Masters on CBS. Welcome back into Fantasy Baseball Today. I am Frank Stample, and we've got uh, Chris here with me. Let's, let's run through our teams in the meantime, Chris, see what we've got going on. And you have, to this point, Salvador Perez for $17, Reese Hoskins for 8 mm -hmm. Raheem Polanco for 7 You don't have a third baseman. Uh, Bo Bichette for 32 Adalberto Mondesi for 2 uh, Springer for 18 Mookie Betts for 42 Randy Rosarena for 23, Riley Green for six, and Fernando Tatis for 32. So you're kind of spread out here. Like you, you kind of you got some good values with like Hoskins and Jorge mm -hmm. Polanco. Then you spent up for for Bichette and Mookie Betts and uh Fernando Tatis. How are you feeling about the offense right now? I think the offense is really good. You know, I'll have to fill it out with probably mostly dollar players. So that'll, you know, I only got at this point in the draft. Uh, eight roster spots, $13 total. So my max bid is six, not a great spot to be in, but you know, I, it's fine. I'll, I'll probably, the way I'll probably approach it is spend five or $6 on one more player. Cause there are still some impact players who could go for that price. And then I'll have to mostly rely on dollar players late, which is not always a great spot to be in, but that's what happens when, you know, you, you do spend up in a couple of spots like I did. And, you know, there are a couple things that like Mondesi for two, maybe getting too cute there. Uh, Carlos Estevez for three meant to go two on that one. So, you know, there are a couple spots where I'd feel better about my team if I had made slightly different decisions, but all in all, I'm pretty happy with where things are right now. I think the, the, the hitting especially is in a very good spot. Let's take a look at your pitchers. You've got Justin Verlander, Robbie Ray, and Chris Sale as your starters. You've got Doval and Carlos Estevez as your relievers to this point. So uh, you got that ace. I know typically in snake drafts, Chris, you wind up with like two aces and then you mm -hmm. jump back in. Um, was that the plan and you just kind of missed out? What do you think? Yeah, like I would have loved to get Kevin Gosman, but he just went a little too expensive looking at like there weren't a lot of pitchers in that range who went for values. You know, Darvish went for four dollars more than Robbie Ray. I've got those two back to back in my rankings, so it wouldn't really have been worth it. I've got I'm a little higher on Robbie Ray than I think you and Scott are. So he is kind of a second ace for me, more like a you know, low end SP2, high end SP3, but I do have faith in him. So it's not that different from my typical strategy, but yeah, I would typically feel better if I had 
Kevin Gosman or Luis Castillo or, or someone like that. It just wasn't worth the the price difference. All right. Well, let's take a look at Scott's team now and start off with the hitters. You got Vinny P. Baby. At $17. Jose Altuve at 30. Nolan Arenado at 32. Corey Seeger at 30. Aaron Judge, big spender, $48. Cedric Mullins for 22. Jake McCarthy for 12. Jake Fraley for three. We'll start with your offense, Scott. You were very clearly going stars and scrubs. And then yep. one mid-tier guy, Vinny Pasquantino. <laughs> well, Jake McCarthy's mid-tier too, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, stars and scrubs. This was, I, I mean, I, I guess I can totally let the cat out of the bag now that I'm out of money. And definitely in the scrub stage of scar stars and scrubs. Uh, yes, I... You know, as I've talked about before, I'm trying to channel Scott White v. 2015 and before. Because basically, you know, my from the time I started doing this in uh, for CBS in 2007 until the juice ball era, I drafted the same way every time, emphasizing going very hitter heavy early on, relying on the volatility of starting pitchers. Uh, in the good way, like leaning into that volatility by, by looking for bargains and breakouts there. And, uh, it was a very successful strategy. And part of it was in a salary cap draft, particularly for a shallower league, want to do it in a deep league, like a 15 team or an AL and I'll only prefer 12 team mixed or shallower stars and scrubs all the way, because I, I'm confident enough in my ability to find low dollar targets with a lot of upside or to find breakouts on the waiver wire during the season that the scrubs aren't actually scrubs. And yet I get the benefit of having a bunch of like high dollar early round types and, and all the production that goes with it. So I am, I'm trying to return to that. We'll see if now that the juice ball's gone, it, it becomes an effective strategy for me, but that was definitely the goal here. And I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I wanted a higher end second baseman than Nolan Arenado uh it, Devers and Machado just went for too much and uh I nominated Arenado while Riley was still out there thinking Riley would also go for more than I was willing to do it turns out they both went for 32 so I would ra I obviously would have rather had Riley than Arenado um I budgeted 35 for Altuve just because I wanted him so much I, I thought there was really no second baseman in my mind that came close to making the impact he did so I was happy to get him for 30 but then I spent those five extra dollars right away going five more than I budgeted on Corey Seager. Again, that was the exact shortstop I wanted. I don't think, I, I think he's going to lead the position in, in home runs. Well, maybe not Tatis or O'Neill Cruz. <laughs> um, but otherwise, <laughs> Seager's, Seager's one of very few 30 homer shortstops. Let's put it that way. And I think there's a good chance he's the best batting average source at the position too. He, so he was specifically the shortstop I wanted. Of course, I want to judge. He was far and away the best player in this format last year, and I think, I think he'll, I think he'll get between eighty to ninety percent of the way there this year. And uh, and then I was I managed to get enough speed, I think, between Mullins and McCarthy, a combined thirty four dollars on them. That it's okay that my high dollar my my high dollar players um, didn't provide me with much speed. So I'm I'm really happy with the way it's going. We'll see how my two and dollar three dollar players uh, turn out. I don't think they're going to be true scrubs. I think they're going to be players I can get excited about, and I'll feel great about my team when all said and done. But it remains to be seen. That's the part of the draft that still has to play out. Obviously, I got one of them, Lucas Giolito, for three, and I do like him at that price. Yeah. On the pitching side for Scott, you wound up with Sandy Alcantara, Lucas Giolito, and Ryan Helsley. Um, and obviously, you're going to be in on the, the bidding for some of these upside -y guys uh, in the final stages here of the draft. I'm going to hop out, and I'll let these guys kind of take over, and you guys can rip my team apart while, <laughs> while I'm gone. I'll be right back. All right, let's pull up Frank's team. Let's talk about what he has here. So, very full lineup so far for Frankie. Yeah, which he is has. fun because he has only three players around the 100 pick uh, mark, and now he's drafted like 12 of the last 80 or something. So, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so he has William Contreras as a catcher, 
So he's got one of the good catchers. That's great. Jose Abreu as his first baseman. I like that. Only $14. Tommy Edmond, second base. Manny Machado, a true stud at third base. You know I like that. Tim Anderson is a shortstop. He's already filled his middle infield spot with Jonathan India, which is a fine pick for the middle infield spot. Already filled corner infield with Anthony Rizzo. Same thing. Fine pick. Kyle Tucker. So between him and Machado, he got two really high-end bats. Uh, Eloy Jimenez and Hunter Renfro. Three of my top 30 in the outfield, which I is a goal in, for me in every five outfielder draft. Uh, and I think... You know, looking at the balance of categories, I, I think it's a good balance. He's got a big speedster in Edmund. He has some stolen bases coming his way from Timmy Anderson and Kyle Tucker. Uh, between Abreu, Machado, Rizzo, Renfro, and Eloy Jimenez, and, and Tucker himself, of course. And Machado himself, I'm not sure if I said him. Power. He's got power. Yeah. So I think he's in a good spot balancing categories. And I... I you know, he hasn't neglected the thin positions considering he already has a third baseman and three outfielders. Uh, and then you look at his pitching staff, a true ace and Garrett Cole, two big strikeout sources and you Darvish and Blake Snell. Snell is a bit combustible, but you know, uh, there, there, there's plenty of reward with that risk. And then a true closer with Rysel Iglesias. So how much money does he have left? He's doing uh, well in terms $15, of fifteen dollars twenty three max, fifteen dollar max bid twenty three dollars total. So fifteen dollar max bid nine spots left to fill. Okay. So yeah, uh, I think it's a pretty good spot. I think it's uh, you know, like like you said, the the hitting categories especially, it feels very balanced. I think it's always tough with runs in particular to know because their runs tend to flow from other categories if you have if you're good in other categories you tend to be good in runs but like jose abreu and Ela jimenez and, and even kyle tucker for an elite player runs are probably going to be an issue for those three guys so I, I do think like if there's a shortage it's probably in runs but that's that's nitpicking and that's something he can address with the hitter spots he has left to fill two of which are outfield spots a lot of outfielders back high in the lineup mm -hmm. maybe he could go for uh is Brandon Nemo still out there? Yeah, Brandon Nemo still out there. Frank, you should go for Brandon Nemo. All right, the one the one thing is, I, I was going to say Nico Horner, but mm. Frank does only have the utility spot left for uh, mm. for infielders, so that that would be a tough fit. Yeah. All right. All right good sounds, balance, Frank. You did well like for did. yourself. Sounds like I'm doing pretty good. Huh? Yeah, for being so distracted with your hosting duties, <laughs> I think you're I think you're in a pretty good spot. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Here's what we're going to do on the podcast side of things. We're going to sign off part two of the podcast, and then we'll pick things up part three here, Fantasy Baseball Today. Welcome back into a Kokomo Friday, part three of the live salary cap mock draft that we're doing. It's not a mock draft, actually. We're playing this one out, but for your purposes, for SEO purposes, it is a live salary cap slash auction, Roto-style lineups two catchers, one of each infield position, five outfielders, and then, of course, nine pitcher spots. We are entering uh, the, the final stages of this draft here. We just hit an intermission, but I've got a few more roster spots to fill. I know a bunch of these guys uh, got some spots to fill as well. And uh, Chris, we'll fire it back up. Chris, you ready to nominate? You're up first, I think. Heck yeah, I am. All right, let's go. All righty, we are back in. And nominate some very, very exciting players like Spencer Steer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Spencer Steer looks like he's going to be the starting third baseman. Well, don't say that for the Reds, although yeah. he could bounce around a little bit. And yeah, I mean, he was pretty dreadful in his 28 or so games in the majors last year, but back to back 20 homer seasons. And, you know, he's a little old ish for a prospect 24, but. If you're going to bet on a guy with fringish skills, I, I think doing so uh, with someone who plays half their games in Cincinnati is a pretty good spot to be in. Pretty well, good numbers in the Niners la last year. And yeah, you want him, Chris, for, for a buck. Yeah, I'm happy with that for a dollar. Spencer Steer for a dollar. Jesus Lazardo is currently out there. He's going for five, now six. Yeah, I thought about throwing Steer out there for two, but I'm glad I played that one right. Mm, Lazardo up to eight. And as much as I like Lazardo, I would rather have Blake Snell, who I got at that same exact price. So, uh, and there you go. He goes for eight bucks. Jesus Lazardo, just stay healthy, please. 
Skills are awesome. Team context is not great, but I'm expecting good ratios, lots of strikeouts, as long as Jesus Lozardo is healthy, ready to pitch. Scott, is this a sleeper of yours, or you're just – is this kind of a – Justin Steele water? is somebody I may win for a doll. You might. And you just did. Okay. Do you actually like it, Justin Steele? I feel like I haven't heard much of him this offseason. He is – Somebody a lot of people like as a sleeper. He had a very strong finish. He doesn't appeal so much to me personally. So it was an example of a player I don't, but I don't really want for more than a dollar. Uh, he did finish very strong. Uh, his, let's see, three of his last five starts, nine Ks or more. And over his, let's see, from June. From June on, the final three months of the season, he had a 205 ERA. A little suspicious because, you know, the, the whip was considerably higher than that. But, yeah, a lot of people like Steele, and I don't mind having a share of him, especially since he's a pitcher who could potentially give me strikeouts. Something else I've mentioned, uh, I've heard mentioned for Justin Steele is that the Cubs defense should be much improved with Dan mm -hmm. Swanson and Cody Bellinger, uh, one roaming shortstop, one in the outfield, obviously. Uh, but it could help. Justin Steele has a really good slider. Chris Taylor thrown out there for two bucks, and he is one for two bucks. In the meantime, Mitch Keller went for a dollar. The old Mitch Keller thing, huh? Mitch, yeah, Mitch Keller. Keller is uh, him and Justin Steele are like perfectly fine one dollar players. I think there's a better chance you're dropping Mitch Keller than Justin Steele, though. Mitch Keller, he has, he has like nine pitches now. <laughs> he just keeps yeah, he adding on. pitches. He's really give Mitch Keller this. He's putting the work in. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to work out for him, but he is not resting on his laurels. Yeah. So he's specifically, he has a splitter cutter hybrid that he's pretty happy with. I'm not going to say the nickname for it because I'm not sure. No, it's a slider cutter hybrid. Sorry. Slider cutter hybrid. Oh, I know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. But yeah, that's he's he's you know the first two outings this spring he's looked pretty good. It's like what five innings, but still. Mm -hmm. uh, Jake Cronenworth went for three dollars and mm -hmm. Danny Jansen as well. Danny, Danny Jansen. Jansen for three. I was in on on two for both of those guys. So those were players I like but don't love. Cronenworth is one of those names where he's he's another one just kind of boring. He's sold out for power the past couple of years. He's not a power hitter. That's why the batting average has gone down, but mm -hmm. he's batting fifth in the Padres lineup. I mean, the counting stats could be tremendous for Jake yeah. Cronenworth. So, oh, I just missed my opportunity to uh, nominate a player. So there you go, Logan Webb. Wow. Pay attention, Frank. What are you doing? All right. Uh, Logan Webb is probably one of the last few top 40-ish remaining starters left. He's someone that I think is probably I'm, – I'm surprised there's – like he had a really good season. It wasn't a great season, but it was a really good one. And his price went down from last year because yeah. he went from being a popular breakout pick to just, I think, kind of being viewed as a boring innings eater type. But right. there's still like he I like a high floor pitcher who has room to grow. And I do think Logan Webb is that kind of player. So like I think he's actually a very good value this year. I haven't drafted him as much as I would like to, but um, I did put a bid in for six, which would have been my max. He's one of the few players I was, I'm still willing to go to my max bid for. So I wouldn't, wouldn't have minded if he had gone to me. Yeah. I think there's two very uh, clear analysis points for Logan Webb. It's like, I look at him as someone who the, the swinging strikes and the strikeouts came down, Chris. And I look at mm -hmm. that as a negative and you probably look at it as, as a positive. Like if he gets back to where he was two years ago, then he could be a great value. Well, yeah, it, it's he was good despite not getting strikeouts. That's and true. we do think that his slider can be better than it was last season in terms of getting whiffs. And if it can, then, you know, I, I think there is room for him to take a, a little bit of a step forward. Yeah. I worry about the Giants defense, though, and the fact that he does pitch more to contact with the shift restrictions. So I think I've probably... Of all three of us, I'm probably the one that is overvaluing the shift restrictions for pitchers most, but it's just kind of in the back of my mind for uh, ground ball pitchers who maybe don't have the best defense behind them. And I think Logan Webb might fit that category. 
Yeah, it's possible. Um, I just, it's still a great park to pitch in. So I, I do think that the, like I said, the floor is pretty high and Joe Musgrove was going to go for seven. He was the other guy I was willing to max bid. And I really wish I had the two extra dollars to take him down because that's going to end up being one of the best buys of the draft. I feel very confident in that. Yeah. So Logan Webb went for nine and then two picks later, Joe Musgrove goes for seven. Of course, what is your max bid, Chris? Six. <laughs> Uh, Scott just wrote that down. He's like, all right. <laughs> no, <it's, it's>, <laughs> he's like, I know what Chris could bid on. Um, Joe Musgrove goes for seven. He's dealing with a fractured toe and could miss the first two or three starts of the season, but he's already throwing. He's yeah. played catch on consecutive days. So I, I think he's going to be back pretty quickly. Doesn't sound like a, a long-term thing for Joe Musgrove. Mm -hmm. DJ LeMahieu thrown out there for $2. There have been whispers that the Yankees want DJ Le LeMahieu to lead off. In as long as he's healthy and games, well, how much he, is he going to play? Yeah, I mean that that it's a big question. Um, yeah. I think they can. So what they're doing right now, Scott, is they're trying out Aaron Judge in left field so that Stanton could play right field because right field is smaller. And then if they do that, they could probably DH Rizzo or Lemayhew. It just kind of opens up another roster spot for them to get someone in the lineup. So yeah, Luis Arise just went for. A buck. So I'm doing a lot. Of, I'm doing a lot of sighing. That's probably not <laughs> good. <sighs> All right, Luisa Rise just went for a dollar, and that was one. Uh, I was close to going. I was close to going two dollars on, but I just have ambitions for an even better, better middle infielder. You know, and mm -hmm. I don't know. That that's one we'll look back and wonder. All right, I got Jose Barrios for three. Yeah, I hate that. I thought I hate that for me. A rise for a buck. I mean, that's that's great. It's great, great buy there. Even if he just gives you batting average. I mean, he should score runs, obviously, and not really provide provide much else. Uh, Jose Barrios for three. Yep. Scott sounds like you're back in on the bounce back. Oh, I am. So you yeah. wound up with Barrios and Gilito. All right, so both yeah. of the backs. Nice. Yep. I, I mean, I'm giving myself options because I didn't buy high end pitchers other than Alcantara. So I'm, I'm trying to get guys with high end upside. Obviously, they're not going to all work out, but I want to give myself bites at the apple. Chris, in the meantime, you won Nick Cassianos, and while we're talking about, about bounce backs, he obviously fits into that category. I've really been fading him this draft season, and it's just because there's nothing. There's nothing in the underlying mm -hmm. that gives us hope. Outside of, like the others, it's, it's really the track record. Can Nick Cassianos just... Get back to the player he was. Yeah, look, that, that's that's exactly it. There's nothing specific that you can point to with Nick Castellanos that can say, okay, he was actually better than he was last season. He was pretty bad last season. He earned most of that. The underlying numbers were not very good, but we're also not very far removed from him being a true impact bat. So I don't love that I maxed out for Nick Castellanos when pitching is a bigger need for me. I am down to dollar bids for the rest of the, the show, so... <laughs> probably not going to get anybody for a little while i can just sit back and uh you know maybe crack open a beer or two but it's uh it's fine it'll be okay so this is this is happening here like it has in so many of the the roto drafts i've done i have four pitcher spots left and about two dozen pitchers that i want <laughs> so i just nominated john gray for a dollar and rj white went two dollars for him and i'm like yeah i mean John Gray seems like a pitcher I'd be happy to have for two dollars, but I didn't want to leave myself with three pitcher spots mm -hmm. to fill when I have so many pitchers still I like. So it's this is part of the reason why I'm happy to go the cheap route at starting pitcher. And I think you're playing it right, Scott. I mean, you throw a guy out for a dollar if you've got you know two dozen that you're willing to get. It's like all right, on to the next one. See if I can get this guy for a dollar, right? So let's keep going down the list and. See who you wind up with. You did bid, bid on Oswald Peraza, who went out for a dollar. You bid two, uh, but then someone else went for three. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he, he was one of my middle infield targets if I didn't get Ezekiel Tovar, which I didn't. Um, but it's, again, like I'm, I'm looking at the options left, and I like a lot of them. So I don't know. I mean, I can't. I There's still enough money out there that I'm not going to get the best options, obviously. So... I may look back on Peraza for three dollars. I may look back on Arise for one and be like, "Man, I wish I had gotten them as my middle infielder." But uh, as it is now, I am 
I'm compelled to to go for the options who are still out there, like Ahmed Rosario, one who just got nominated now. But of course, his price is rapidly rising beyond the point I'm willing to go. Five dollars is what he's at right now, and that's what he went for. Pretty good, pretty good buy, but not a buy I could justify. Yeah, very good price for Ahmed Rosario. A couple others that went: Jimmy Herget for a buck, Oswald Praza for three, Sal Freelich went for a dollar, which I believe caused Chris to uh, suck his teeth. Yeah, not very happy about that. Obviously, I, I didn't have a spot on my lineup for him, so I was going to have to wait to the reserve rounds if I wanted South Freelich. And that's a great pickup with Garrett Mitchell leaving the game with a hamstring injury. Yes, we don't know if it's serious right now, but if it is, you know, South Freelich is someone who could be in the opening day lineup in a pretty good Brewers lineup uh, in a good park with some speed and, and some contact skills. So I, I really think he could be very well worth using in fantasy if he has a job. Glaber Torres went for $4 just after Ahmed Rosario went for 5 So as I said in hour two or part two of, of this very long live stream and podcast, <laughs> uh, a lot of the mid-tier players that are available are going to go for much cheaper than you think they should, much cheaper than we will have them listed for on the site in terms of our salary cap values. And that's just because there's not a lot of money to go around. So people are being very particular about the players that they are choosing to uh, bid on at this point in the draft. Mm -hmm. Ryan Mountcastle goes for, uh, he's currently going for $3. And, you know, I feel bad for Mountcastle guys because this guy crushed the ball. Yeah, he had the breakout. Great stack cast numbers, <laughs> but just because they took out a chunk of their ballpark in Camden yep. Yards, it just killed power for Ryan. You know what? Rodriguez. I like that he had the breakout. He you know just, what, man? Grayson Rodriguez is going to make a lot of money in his career. He needs to send a, a, a stipend to Ryan, Ryan Mountcastle because everybody says they did this for Grayson, Mon Grayson Rodriguez, move the par fences back, help these yeah. pitchers develop. Send Ryan Mountcastle a, a bit of your paycheck when you when you hit it big, Grayson. I think they did it more so for John Means and then so that they could make moves like the Cole Irvin one yeah. they made this offseason because... Um, yeah, I hate a, it. Like, that's, like it, it, it just feels slimy to me, the Cole Irvin signing, because it's like, oh, did you, did you um, do this to your stadium? Uh... I'm going to do this. I'm going to go five on Nico Horner, even though I said I was doing nothing but two $3 bids. And I got him. Nice. I got him. And we all know him. you'd rather have Nico Horner than Ahmed Rosario. Why? Because you hate Ahmed Rosario, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Ahmed Rosario went for five as well. So the yeah. same thing. Like, I, I wouldn't have gone six for Nico Horner, you know? Um. So, yeah. You know, one player we haven't talked about really at all this offseason has been JD Martinez, who's utility only. He signed with the Dodgers. And I was looking into him the other day. The stack has numbers are, are still pretty good. Obviously, he's he's lost a step. He's he's getting up there in age, but probably gonna back clean up for the Dodgers this season. I just got him for two bucks. Well, you guys have any strong opinions on JD Martinez? No. He's not quite like, do, I think he's in decline. I think he's in decline. He's going to be in the Dodgers lineup, presumably playing every day. And the Dodgers have done some magical transformational things with players. So that, that gives me hope for him, but it's not enough hope that I want to have a true DH in that utility spot. You know, it's not like I'm putting David Ortiz there or Shohei Otani. It's, Right. It's JD Martinez who I can't even count on hitting 20 home runs. So I just, I mean, I don't blame you for buying him for $2, but it, it's, it's just a, it's a pick. I have a hard time getting excited about. Speaking of $2, I wound up drafting Alex Lang for two. Sorry, Chris. I know you threw him out for a buck. Yeah. I was hoping I could sneak him through as one of my $1 bids. This is how things are going to go for the next hour or so for me. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we'll be right here to cover all of Chris's frustrations. Um, Alex Lang, they, the Tigers traded Gregory Soto this offseason. He does struggle mightily with control, but seems to be the leader in the clubhouse uh, for the, the Tigers 
closer gig or at least the majority of the saves for that team. So and the the changeup and curveball are both really, really good swing and miss pitches for him. So there could be a lot of strikeouts there for uh for Alex Lang. Tyler Malley currently thrown out for a buck. Chris, if you could go two right now, would you? Absolutely. He was one of the players I thought about throwing out for two early on in the draft. Mm. Um so yeah. And I'm not so sure I wanted him. <laughs> I I just yeah, no, that's one that I was just I, I was I was gonna throw out for a dollar later on in the draft, but I wanted to wait until there was yeah. a little less money floating around. This is always the tough thing about you know hitting your max bid early. I thought about going too because Chris, frankly, you've talked me into Tyler Malley. I think there's a lot to like. The velo has been up so far in spring training, so I'm hoping the shoulder is good to go. But there's still there's better pitchers left, so I'm just wondering if. That's the thing. Maybe I won't it's get just, those guys for a buck, but if I could get, you know, one of these names for two, I, you know, I, I'll, I'll go the extra dollar for one of those guys. So it's just how real, like, yes, there are better pitchers left than Tyler Malley. And I have, I'm down now down to three pitcher spots. I probably want one of them to be a reliever. Mm -hmm. um, ugh, I should have gone two on Kyle Raleigh. All right. He's going way beyond that. That's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, that's. That's tough. <laughs> That's tough. Cause I like, there is some money out there. There's not a lot of money, but there's enough that is it realistic. You're going to be able to win the best players who are left. Any of them for two or $3. I don't know. I don't know. Mm. There's a fun player getting thrown out right now. Esteuri Ruiz. Somebody tagged me in a video. I believe it was Shay Langoliers. So obviously talking about it from a catcher perspective, trying to throw out Esteuri Ruiz. And he said that this guy is a nightmare on the base pass. We already knew that, but yeah. I guess it's kind of fun to hear it from a teammate's perspective. And is he is he going to get to first base though? That's that's the, that's the biggest question, right? That's the same big thing question. To, same thing we used to say about Billy Hamilton: you can't steal first. Well, that's that's the concern with Esteri Ruiz, but he does get on first. Very likely taking second base. Uh, so one of the fastest players in the game. Cal Raleigh went for four. Charlie Blackman went for a buck in the meantime. Trey Mancini is currently going for two, and he is sold to Scott White. All right. I'm getting a lot of shares of Trey Mancini all of a sudden. I got him in TGFBI and Tout Wars and no. now in Memorial Mag. Should we thank the uh, emailer who sent in the email about uh, Trey Mancini? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see cool. how good he is. Um. Same sort of issue where I'm seeing a lot of outfielders I like. Of course, I had corner infield open too, which helps. And I may just slot Mancini there. Uh, let's see. Say a Suzuki. Okay, good. If Say a Suzuki went for two. I'd feel real stupid, but <laughs> uh, you're getting him for three, Frank. That's pretty good. That's uh, a really good one. Yeah. yeah. I love Say a Suzuki yeah. before he hurt his oblique. I mean, he's probably going to miss the first couple of weeks, maybe the first month, but we have five IL spots in this league. And uh, yeah, so I'll just kind of. Let's wait on Seiya Suzuki and hope he is that kind of breakout player I thought he could be. Okay, this makes me feel better about Trey Mancini. Andrew Vaughn got nominated. I went three right away. Mm -hmm. He's up to five now, so I wouldn't have been able to get him. Yeah. I mean, I technically would have been able to get him, but I wouldn't have been willing to do what it took to get him because then I'd be, you don't, like, stars and, the worst thing you can do if you go stars and scrubs, you know, you're going to have a lot of scrubs. <laughs> if you If you get... Down to just one dollar bids too early. Holy crap, you are screwed because you are just going to get the worst of whatever does. So get. I'm I'm screwed is what you're saying. Well, how many D spots do you have left? You weren't going stars and scrubs. I have six you? spots. Yeah, it could be worse. <laughs> so Chris, I, I only have six spots too. <laughs> Chris wound up with uh, three thirty dollar hitters. I wrote this down. A Rosa Reina for twenty three. Mm -hmm. Another one for eighteen. So yeah, I mean, spent up quite a bit uh, on some of those you, guys. Because, like, it, it's even worse than, like, if you don't think it through, and of course, if you've done a salary cap draft, you've probably experienced your, this yourself, but it's not just, oh, I can only bid a, bid a dollar on, I can only bid one dollar on anybody. It's, you can only win the players you yourself nominate. Yes. So you have to, Correct. you have to try and do, walk this fine line of nominating mm -hmm. a player that's actually good enough, but not so good that somebody goes two on you. Because yep. then if he goes through two on you, you got to wait through the whole round of nominations again before you have a chance at anybody else. And it just absolutely the worst. It yep. is not fun. That's exactly right. Freddie Peralta thrown out there for nine bucks. So Chris Mitchell will try to make sure that he. Well, that's his last player and he has nine dollars left. So, yeah, fair enough. 
Uh, and obviously one Freddie Peralta for nine. Jorge Mateo went for two in the meantime. Logan Gilbert for six. Say what you will about Gilbert. It seems like a pretty good value on him. Ah, Chris, what's dead may never die. Josiah Gray for a buck. Yeah, we'll see what happens. But like under the surface, the surface level number is obviously very different between Josiah Gray and Tristan McKenzie. Under the surface, very similar pitchers rely heavily on their sliders and, and curveballs for all their swings and misses. Not great fastballs. Josiah Gray just tends to get hit harder, so he's got to take a step forward. But like, I could see those guys moving towards one another this year. I'm glad you went four dollars on Mitch Haniger, Frank. I would have, I would have been kicking myself if somebody got to three first on him. <laughs> All right, Mitch Haniger goes to me for so my. My hitters are basically all filled out. I need a second catcher. And uh, so I'll just tell everyone now, I budgeted $180 of my $260 for hitters. And now I have $6 left for catcher two. So I probably should have got a better sec uh, second catcher than what's available. And I, I don't want Travis Darno, so he's all yours, Scott. Um, so I'm going to take some of that money and, and put it over to the pitching side with whatever I need left over there. I still only have three starters and, and two relievers. Cole, Darvish, Snell, Iglesias, and Alex Lang. Okay. I found my dollar nominations. Catchers. Nobody wants to go two on any of the <laughs> remaining ones because I nominated clearly the best in Travis Darno and got him for one. Very nice. Like it. A couple of fun pitchers left, too. I'm interested to see how much some of these guys are going to go for. Severino, Dustin May. Yep. No, there's very... Very interesting starting pitchers left for sure. And Scott, it looks like you're going to get Jordan Montgomery for two. I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, not one. Of, I mean, he's interesting ish, but not definitely not one of the super interesting guys remaining. I don't know about that. Well, I'll tell you what, stupid. Scott, the defending champ says that that was a steal in the chat room. So I don't know about that. <laughs> Jordan Montgomery is a solid pitcher. I mean, high floor. He did get better when he went to the Cardinals last year too. So we always thought there was another step. Maybe he can get there with the Cardinals. I, I'm it, not completely it's, ruling it out. It's not, it's not Jordan. That my, it, my issue is not with Jordan Montgomery. My issue is with, that was one of my last three SP spots and there's some, there's a lot of good ones left. Yeah. Yeah, there is. I kind of got, so. I got a little bit of money left too, so I'm kind of trying to figure out which one of these pitchers I want to wind up with. So. Tony Gonsolin just went for two. I'd rather have Tony Gonsolin for two than mm -hmm. than Montgomery, but I could like I couldn't do that to myself again, you know, and be left with one RP uh, as one pitcher spot. Yeah, I don't know. I may be screwing this up. Let me catch some people up. We we had Darno go for one. Montgomery went for two to Scott. Tony Gonsolin went for two. And got, uh, Yasmani Grandal got thrown out for one. I went two on him. Oh, you jerk, Frank. Sorry, man. I, I needed a second catch. <laughs> it you. wasn't me. I was just saying. Like, he didn't go two on Darno. He probably thought he was safe nominating Grandal. <laughs> yeah. I I just kind of worry about Darno. Second catcher. is How many DH games is he actually going to get? So... Yeah, he's been someone I, ha I haven't really wound up with very much. Uh, and my hitting spots are all all figured out. Wow, I've got three White Sox on the scene. That seems that seems bad. <laughs> just, just realize. Well, it depends who they are, you know. I've got uh, Grandal, Tim Anderson, and Eloy. So. Yeah. yeah, those guys are all those guys are all good. Some good players. You know, it's and and you do have uh, Jose Abreu. So there you go. Getting the much, band back together. Let's see how Dustin May is one of the very interesting pitchers left who I would love to have been able to offer some money on. But okay, and they're they're all bidding me out of my range on him, so that's all right. And he's gone. Fabulous. Yeah, I, I wanted to throw it out there as to test mm -hmm. the water, Scott. How much is he going to go for Dustin May? Up to seven dollars. So whoever was saving their money, this is who it was for. Is for Dustin May. I, I tell you though. So in all these regular drafts, I'm filling half my pitching staff with the Mount Rushmore, right? My worst starting, well, my worst starting pitcher is Justin Steele, but like I, I, I may get to round out my pitching staff here better than the Mount Rushmore. You know, like I, well, I, I spent almost nothing on my pitching staff, and I may not have to dip into the the Mount Rushmore. But is there anything actually better than the Mount Rushmore, Scott? I mean, they are <laughs> the Mount Rushmore for reasons. So, uh, true. <laughs> True. Dustin May went for seven. 
Uh, Tyro Estrada went for two. Mm. I have him in bus 1.0, but geez, two bucks. It's pretty cheap. Oh, yeah, Jeff hard McNeil to complain just about went that. For one. Yeah, Jeff McNeil went for one. I think Greg that's... Lathrop just gobbling up the value at this point. Whatever positions he has left. Man. And I like I, I could have gone two, obviously, on him. But I'm down to just two possible outfield spots. I've already filled middle infield, but um, McNeil's eligible in the outfield. And I just don't know that I want it for a batting average specialist, you know? Right. Shay Langoliers went for $1. For, if you play on CBS, he is DH only, utility mm -hmm. only to start the season, but uh, likely to be the everyday catcher for the A's. So maybe by week two or three, you'll have catcher eligibility for Shay Langoliers. And that's a good buy, Chris. I like that. Cabot Ruiz for a buck. Thank you. Yeah, I feel like that's a good combination with Salvador Perez. He was the other one that I was considering. I was, do I want Grandal or Ruiz? It's close for me. Hoping uh, Grandal could get back on track. Scott Barlow is up for three bucks. The Royal sign a rolled as Chapman this offseason. So mm -hmm. we still don't really know who's going to be their saves leader. Yeah, that's one where it's just like, I, I have such a hard time seeing Aroldis Chapman being on a team, especially a mediocre team, not closing and being happy about it. So that's why, like, my assumption is still that Aroldis Chapman's going to be the closer, just because, like, would he really agree to be there if he wasn't? And maybe that's not a good reason. It's just. He does not well, strike me as the like go along to get along team player type who's going to lift someone else up to glory. <laughs> and why would the Royals sign him to a one year deal if not to you know, yeah, pump not, up not his trade value? Flip him, right? Yeah. And, and you're going to up his trade value more with him closing. Um, so. And I believe he has started throwing in spring games, right? I know he had the weird thing where he like slipped and fell and busted yeah. his lip. Yeah, yeah, but he's been pitching. Yeah, I think he's, I think he's made two appearances so far. That is a role as Chapman. I think the hope for the Royals is if they can get you know ten to yeah, ten to twelve saves out of him, he looks all right. Flip him at the deadline, get you know whatever a mid level prospect. Yeah, that's the hope. And then Scott Barlow will take over from there on out. One player that you want in the meantime, Scott Christian Betancourt for a dollar. And I brought him up when we did our catcher preview as a very deep sleeper as a, as a second catcher. And I like it. Uh, I mean, he hit the ball extremely hard last year. He sneakily stole five bases for the Rays, and he's already both a better catcher and better hitter than Francisco Mejia. So I think he's, you know, even if it's a 60 40 split, I think he will see the majority of playing time at catcher for the Rays. I think so too. Yeah. I'll take him. I'll buy that for a dollar. And that's what I did. I paired him and Travis Darno, two dollar catcher tandem combined. And I, I love doing that in these uh, salary cap leagues because, while uh, okay, in a regular snake draft, you could say, oh, you could just spend your last two picks on Darno and Beth and Court. It's the same thing. It's really not because the um, the amount of savings by going only a dollar on a player it, it, it means you're able to get a bet better player. Uh, relative to what you could have gotten at some other position. And, and I think that, what am I trying to say? It The benefit of going cheap at catcher is more in a salary cap league than in a draft because the, the savings at that position can be better allocated in a salary cap draft than the, the draft pick savings in a conventional redraft. A couple other players that went in the meantime, Luis Severino went for five, Hunter Brown went for two, uh, Nick Fortes went for one, and Austin Meadows went for two. And I just picked up uh, Drew Rasmussen for three, who has had great numbers as a starter the past couple of years with Tampa Bay. And I think there's, I think there's a chance he could get some more strikeouts. I know the K per nine was a little bit lower last year, but he gets swinging strikes. He pitches for a good organization. I like Drew Rasmussen. He is my SP four behind Cole Darvish and Snell. All right, things are slowing down a little bit here. 
let's take uh, let's take a little break here. We're in part three, and we'll be back right after this. Hey, Calvin, you play golf. You think you can win one of those green jackets at the Masters? Well, if it's for being the most loving neighbor of the year, yes. It's a tradition unlike any other. The Masters on CBS. We're back, and okay, Brian Hayes just went for a dollar. I saw a note earlier in the day that he is dealing with some kind of thumb soreness. Oh, thumb issue, yeah. And he's, oh, dealt, man. he's dealt with like a hand or a wrist before, right? Yes, he has. All right, this is your guy, Fran, Brand, uh, Brandon. Frank? Frank, it's your guy, Brandon Nemo. Oh, <laughs> well, I don't have any more hitter spots, so I can't no, do anything. You blew it. Sorry, man. You blew it, Frank. Uh, yeah, I guess in Could hindsight. Finding I, Nemo. Would you guys rather have Nimmo for two than JD Martinez? Probably. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, thanks, guy. You made me feel great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> thanks, man. Uh, so, Brandon Nimmo went for two. Cabrian Hayes went for one. Uh, Dylan Floro. Chris, you're such a homer, man. Yeah, snuck him through. Might be a closer. Who, who, who knows? I, you know, the, the Marlins, I think Tanner Scott and AJ Puck were both, uh, Limited early in spring, so I would say Dylan Flores ahead of those guys, and that uh, makes me think he's going to be the closer to start the season. Uh, yeah, so you're right about that. Some guys are kind of banged up for the Marlins bullpen right now. Both Scott and Puck have begun throwing. I believe they've pitched yeah. in games now, but still, they're you know two weeks back. They still have Matt Barnes, who has closer experience, and yes. Skip Schumacher, new manager of the Marlins, did say that they're going to go with a closer by committee. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, Dylan Floro ended the season as the closer, and he's one of their only healthy relievers at this point. Scott, you just won Paul Seawald for three. I thought I could jump in at two and get him, but you really wanted him, huh? <laughs> yeah, I did. He was the best reliever remaining, and I think the only reliever based on the quality of starting pitchers that's out there, I think um, I think Seawald was the only reliever I was willing to to put in one of those last two pitcher spots of mine. So now I'm down to direct getting one pitcher. It'll obviously be a starting pitcher. And there are a couple of options I really like, and really three options that are great. And they're a tier higher than the Mount Rushmore. So again, oh, I, at right. this point, I'm regretting the Justin Steele and uh, Tyler Malley nominations. So moving forward, you should probably just throw out some of these higher end names, right? Just to see if you wind up with them. Uh, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess we haven't reached that point yet. No. Nope. Well, here's one of them. Charlie Morton, I assume. Yeah. What's yes, your max? This is one. What's your max bid, Scott? Max bid six. Uh -oh. He's got three spots to fill. Uh oh. Go four. Come on. Throw go the player it. away. Go, go, go. Oh, boo. Oh. Boo. Yeah, I, oh. I want somebody a little safer than Morton because I already have Giolito. I already have Barrios. What? You love Charlie Morton. I love Charlie Morton, but I don't know that I love him for this build. I don't think strikeouts are my issue so much as just security. Uh, and there are a couple more secure options out there. Is this one of them? Oh, well, yeah. He's gone. Joe is. Ryan. That's who we're talking about. Charlie Morton went for three. Tristan Casas went for two. Ah, oh, wow. Jeez. Oh, man. I should have gone four on Morton because now Joe Ryan's up to six. <laughs> Uh, look, look you can't you can't say it, we didn't try because we were yeah, rooting you on no, here scotty so. you, you should have <laughs> i should have gone four on morton and you threw out tristan casas for a buck right and i, I think mm -hmm. i heard a sigh when when greg won him for two yeah you were definitely like in the middle of a sentence and you you kind of stumbled over it as that bid came in mm -hmm. uh, so but that makes me feel bad because like he was definitely one of the guys i was like well i'm gonna hang on and see if i can get him through late but I assume if I had thrown him out there before, you would have bid too, right? Yeah. And if not you, the person who ended up getting him for $2 would have. So. Well, see, what, what happened was Tristan Casas, Josh Bell, and Ty France were out there. I would have been fine with any of them as my corner infielder. I threw out the one that I thought I would most likely get for a dollar, which was Casas. Mm -hmm. I almost did. Somebody went too. And and since then, somebody's nominated Josh Bell. So now we're down to Bell in France that I want for my corner infield spot. And I decided to go three on Bell. I could have gone three on Casas instead, um, but I'm cutting it a little closer now. And um... wow, is this really going to happen? Oh, no. all right. Uh, there you go. I shouldn't have no. said anything. 
No, I, I was. Said, I should have just let Scott keep talking. <laughs> I was staring at. So it's Chris Bassett. And right. Frank was trying to get him for a dollar. I'm going to fill my last pitching spot with him. It was between him and Pablo Lopez. It's good. It's goodbye. Yeah. Hopefully. His velocity's yeah. been down this spring, Bassett's. But uh, I, heard, I mean, I would have. I would have rather had Charlie Morton. Let's be honest. I saw a few tweets that say Bassett is someone who typically starts with a lower velocity and and uses the spring to kind of ramp up and and get up to to game shape by the time we get to opening day. So it's down a lot. It's like four miles per hour. I don't want to downplay that, but you know, right. as long as he's slowly ramping it up, I, I think it was down three miles per hour. His last outing, you know, every mile. Yeah, three... It's not something I'm supremely worried about, but it's just, it's not, it, it's not the thing you want to hear. Obviously. It's got had a missed opportunity earlier. You won Josh Bell. So I, I feel like you deserve this. <laughs> Song. Indeed, love it, Josh Would Bell. I have been better off with France, France though. Um, maybe. Close. Yeah, I think those players are very similar, both Josh Bell and Ty France. A couple other bids that got thrown out there: Lourdes Gurriel for a dollar. I think he's someone who's off to a nice start in the spring. He's entering a contract year. Was playing hurt last season as well. Will Myers won for a dollar. This is how Greg wins, man. We're just sitting here, you know, playing music and drops and stuff. And Greg Laffer's just sneaking by these awesome players for a dollar. Will Myers, good job. Francisco Alvarez went for a dollar. Alec Bohm went for two. Launch angle. Alec Bohm. Take a look at Greg Lathrop's roster. See how it's looking. Yeah, I have a feeling it's really good. What else is new? Oscar Gonzalez went for two. The outfield's really good for Greg Lathrop. The infield is suffering. Man, you know hands. what? I got JD Martinez for two. Brandon Nimmo went for two. Oscar Gonzalez. No, 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 no. That's not what I meant to do, guys. I hit the wrong button. Nope, you got you got to keep You're him. You're gonna let me back it out this time, no, right? No, you got to keep him. No. Chris, <laughs> what do you say? No. I mean, you did say you wanted Ty France earlier, so I don't know. I think you got to keep him. You can back him out if you want to. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to see Scott too upset two years in a row. It's makes me upset, you know. Yeah, uh, last year was. I mean, it's not a bad play. <laughs> no, for a dollar. Why don't you just keep? It's not what I meant to do. I'm not going to hedge and like. It's not what I meant to do. What this position is what do you have left? This is what I meant to do. Oh, all right. I mean, Garrett Mitchell for three. <sighs> Ty France for a dollar, Scott. Yeah, but I already have two first basemen, and then I like. I'd rather have the outfield and the potential steal specialist. I got a lot of batting average already. All right. Is that um, your last player? Yeah, that's my last player. Look at Scotty. First one out. Let's go. I'm not the first one out. Oh. First one well, of us. First the first one, one of us three. three. Yes. Yes, of course. Yes. Yeah, fourth, fourth one in the draft. How are you feeling overall, Scotty? Good. I think. <laughs> Uh-oh. This is where I mean... he goes. He looks at his team. <laughs> I wanted Morton. I think I, I think I should have gone for Morton as my last starter instead of, you know, holding out for Joe Ryan and ending up with Chris Bassett. So that, like, I can't help but fixate on the negative. Um, mm -hmm. And I look at the quality of pitchers I could have had, and it's like, oh, and I filled the spot with Justin Steele already. And Tyler Malley, I'm less, I'm less concerned about Tyler Malley, but the Justin Steele one really gets to me, knowing what I could have had. <laughs> Th this is like a, a secret downside of only bidding on your starting spots is like you are kind of limited in what kind of flyers you could take. Right. Yeah. It's... And and this is part of the reason why I want to go with stars and scrubs. So I think it's the right approach for this is because I'm here talking about how I filled my spots too quickly <laughs> for my liking, right? And that's with, um, gosh, how many players did I get for $3 or less? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 of my 23 spots were for $3 or less. And it's like, man, I wish I had more spots. I could have gotten better players there. Right. Let's catch people up after you took Garrett Mitchell, Clark Schmidt. Speaking of flyers, he went for a dollar. Someone tried to sneak Andres Munoz by for a buck. Uh-uh, not today. 
I went two. Uh, jo- uh, Josh Young went for one. Jonah Heim went for one. And it is my turn to nominate a player. And I don't think anyone can bid more than two. So I'm going to throw out Pablo Lopez for two. And I'll get him as my SP5. And feel pretty good. That means I've got Garrett Cole, Hugh Darvish, Blake Snell, Drew Rasmussen, and Pablo Lopez as my starters. My relievers, I've got Rysel Iglesias, Alex Lang, and Andres Munoz. And Luis Garcia yep. goes for two. Who would you guys I rather like- have? Pablo Lopez or Luis Garcia? Pablo. I think so, yeah. Yay. Uh, maybe. I, I think Luis Garcia, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the Astros ride him a little harder with uh, Justin Verlander being gone, but I I think he's kind of in that that no man's land for innings accumulation. You know, a lot of five inning starts. So I just I, I find it hard to get excited about him. All right, Chris Trevor Rogers for a buck. Nice buy, Chris. Yeah, I was. You know, I, I saw there's three people with more than a dollar left, and I saw Frank was one of them, and I was like, oh, but he just took a pitcher. He doesn't need another pitcher. And then I looked, and I was. I almost had a panic attack because it was just like, oh no, he does have a pitcher spot left, but he didn't want Trevor Rogers, thankfully. So I did think about out. it, but uh, Rogers is yours. I'll let you have him. There's one other pitcher that I'm eyeing. I've got three dollars left, and nobody could beat that. So I will wind up with this pitcher, and I'm not going to reveal his name yet because let's let's build the suspense, right? Why not? Joey Manessis goes for a dollar. Joey two hits. See if he can carry it over. Monster second half for the Nationals. We know he's going to play. Just what will he do with the playing time? Uh, Craig Kimbrell goes for two. We are, we are truly in the end game now, Scott. I feel like we said the end game came like two hours ago. <laughs> this is <the laughs> my end game did. That, that's fair. That is fair. <laughs> the overall end game, the end game of the podcast. We are, we are winding down. You know. Yeah, we got 16 players left to be picked in the uh, salary cap portion of the draft, and then we got our six-round uh, reserve draft would be the way we would say it. Mm-hmm. My brain's a little fried from the three and a half hours. I just took a little, took down a little more dew, a little <laughs> more Mountain Dew to keep me going. Do the dew. Do the dew. It's it's the code red kind, too, so it looks like I'm drinking um, – uh. Uh, power, uh, not powers. It looks like I'm drinking. Oh, what's it called? Transmission fluid. Yikes. I'm probably, not. probably does something it. similar to your insides. <laughs> it lubricates them. Yeah. Okay. Bryson Stott don't thrown out for a dollar. Someone who has sneaky, good sprint speed. Wouldn't surprise me if he sees a big uptick in steals this season. The Phillies. Andrew Heaney went for a dollar. Brian Bayo went for a dollar. Bayo's got some upside, but dealing with a forearm strain and the suspense is over because I'll be nominating Reed Detmers. Yeah, that makes sense. For three bucks, and he will be my final player one. I like it. I'm hoping. So now I'm looking ahead and like who is going to make it through the reserve rounds because some good players are just by virtue of players. Just like Justin Steele being uh, on the active roster. Mm-hmm. Some good ones are going to slip through. And uh, I think I have one of the earlier picks in the reserve rounds. I don't remember exactly where I nominated, but it's the same order. Well, Boom. in the meantime... So I was hoping Detmers might, but no. Oh, it's, Chris is going to gobble up Ty France for a buck? Good job. No, nope. he's not! Oh, oh no! no. Was, oh no. That was one where I was trying to figure out like, is he gonna get through? Is it even worth it? Or should I just nominate someone else? Right. Oh and in between uh, me nominating France for a dollar and me right. nominating, apparently somebody else RJ wanted got taken. Because that's no, a yes. frustrating I blame Scott. And and you know what? You got him for a dollar, didn't you? Right, it's, exactly. That's what oh, I'm saying. Oh, that is that is that's unfortunate. And I am unhappy currently it's like it's like i was i i was able to show you this is what happens if you nominate ty france and mm-hmm. you're wise enough to say well then i'll nominate ty france but mm-hmm. the, the variables changed in my face <laughs> boom while we wait for chris to wrap up his team let's take a look at scott and my squads and 
Start off with Scotty here on the infield. He's got Christian Betancourt and Travis Darno at catcher. $2 combined for those two. Vinny Pasquantino, Jose Altuve, Nolan Arenado, and Corey Seager. <clears throat> Nico Horner at middle, Josh Bell at corner. And then in the outfield, Aaron Judge, Trey Mancini, Cedric Mullins, Jake Fraley, Jake McCarthy, and Garrett Mitchell. Stars and scrubs, Scott, do you accomplish your goals here on offense? I mean, other than the catchers where you're halfway expecting scrubs anyway, there's not a single player in my starting lineup who I'm not happy to have there. You know, I think my least favorite is probably Josh Bell, who may go 280, 280, 25, 80, 80, you know? Uh, so I, I think, no, I guess Trey Mancini, I'm less excited about than that. But, you know, the, the point is I like them all to some degree. And um, I'm very pleased with the way it turned out. Uh, they're not all going to work out, these low-dollar players. But there is a waiver wire, and I plan to be active on it. And uh, I think the end result will be good. I didn't leave myself lacking in deals or batting average or home runs. So I like it. All right, let's take check out the pitchers that you wound up with. You got Sandy Alcantara for 28, and then you waited after that at starter. You got Giolito for three, Jose Barrios for three, Chris Bassett for two, Tyler Malley for one, Justin Steele for one, uh, and Jordan Montgomery for two. So you got the ace, and then you kind of lived in that 2 to $3 range. And yep. your relievers, you've got Ryan Helsey for eight and Paul Seawald for three. Thoughts on the pitching staff? So I did hear OSP, which I know Chris likes. I took it to its furthest extreme. As I was talking about earlier, um, now that the juice ball era is over, I'm hoping my old strategy of leaning into the volatility at starting pitcher comes through, meaning um, don't spend a lot on it, but what you do spend, make sure it's high upside guys like former former aces like Giolito and Barrios. And... Um, you know, whoever doesn't work out there because it's more volatile than hitting, it means there are going to be more interesting options emerging on the waiver wire. And hope it, hopefully it works out. It's It used to be a very successful strategy for me. And then the juice ball era kind of ruined that. Hopefully it gets back to being a successful strategy for me. But it is, I, I can take pleasure in that I followed through on my plan. Because the last couple of years, I don't think I did. I think I got scared away by some of the overbids for the high-end players and just kind of wound up in this um, middle ground sludge territory <laughs> and, and finished in the middle of the standings. As real. Actually, one of those years, 2021, I finished at a terrible finish, 11th place. Hey, so, join the club. I was 11th last year, so. There you go. I had a bunch of players either get hurt or underperform. I spent up for Giolito last year. Mike Trout was good when he played, but obviously missed some time. Uh, I had Yasmani, Yasmani Grandal, funny enough, on this team as well. Wound up with him again. Uh, so just a lot of underperformance, some injury last year, but no excuses. It was not my best work, obviously. Let's take a look at my team. In the infield, I've got William Contreras and Yasmani Grandal at catcher. That's $12 combined. Jose Abreu for 14 Tommy Edmond for 14 Manny Machado for 38, uh, Tim Anderson for 13, Jonathan India for six, Anthony Rizzo for seven. Uh, then I've got, uh, just scrolled up on me for a second, Mitch Hanniger, Hunter Renfro, Eloy Jimenez, Kyle Tucker, Taya Suzuki in the outfield, J.D. Martinez at DH. I think it's pretty well balanced. In hindsight, I think when Lindor was going for 23, probably should have been in on him. I think... Maybe if I had one more 20 plus dollar hitter, I feel a little bit better about this. But for taking, I wanted Machado and Tucker for getting those guys and then just kind of living in the mid tier. I think it worked out pretty well. I think it's very well balanced. I've got some speed with Edmund, with Tim Anderson. I think India could chip in some. I think Kyle Tucker will give me 20 plus steals. Suzuki, when he's back, maybe double digits. So I've got, I got speed down. Adding average looks all right. I got some pop. I like it. I like the offense. I just, my only thing, Scott, is I wish I got maybe one more big name. I, I think it was Lindor in hindsight. Okay. Yeah. Probably. I got to be honest. I wasn't listening because we are starting the reserve rounds now. <laughs> uh, all right. I'll quickly run through my pitchers then, and then we could just get off and running with this draft. Uh, the pitchers I wound up with, Gary Cole, Hugh Darvish, Blake Snell, Rysel Iglesias, 
Reed Detmers, Alex Lang, Drew Rasmussen, Pablo Lopez, and Andres Munoz. Uh, all right, whenever you guys are ready, are are we up and running? We're good to go? Yeah, yeah, we're going. Oh, sweet. All right, so Started. the first pick of the reserve draft was Alex Cobb, Mackenzie Gore. I really had to pay attention here. <laughs> uh, sorry, folks. I'll uh, I'll put this up for those watching so you can follow along with the draft. Eduardo Rodriguez went to Chris. Uh, let me see. Yeah, you wrote someone we haven't really talked about, but Sorry. I liked him a lot last season, and his his spring, his velocity's been up a yep. about a tick, a tick and a half. Um, it's been a weird couple of years for him. Remember, he had the myocarditis issue during the COVID shortened season last year. He was away from the team, um, but I still think there's room for him to be a pretty useful player. Yeah, I was going to point out that he, he's having a great spring right now. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put too much into it, but Eduardo Rodriguez is someone who has had success in the past. No surprise, Scott winds up with one of the Mount Rushmore with Miles Michaelis. A couple other picks, Jose Leclerc went, uh, Taiwan Walker. Trying to figure out what I should do first here. <laughs> uh, all right, Harrison Bader goes, dealing with an oblique injury. He might start the season on the IL for the Yankees. I'm up in two picks. I've got an idea. Daniel Hudson could work his way into the closer mix when he's back for the. And this is a this is a league with IL spots, so you know, should be able to mix him in there. Yep. Uh, Kyle Finnegan goes. I think that's a really good pick. Likely to wind yeah. up as closer to start at least for the Nationals. And I I, I, I got sniped on Jose Leclerc. I should have looked at Kyle Finnegan. Uh, I took Ramon Laureano because I've got Seiya Suzuki. He will start on the IL, and I need an outfielder to fill in for him. So a little bit of, little bit of power and speed for Racer Ramon. And Greg is up. Then we've got the turn for two. Jorge Lopez. What are you guys thinking about the Twins' bullpen this season? Obviously, Duran is head and shoulders better than Jorge Lopez, but yeah. they, they usually do the arbitration thing where – you know, they don't let their team control players get all the saves. So what are you thinking about the the Twins bullpen? I think. What do I think about the Twins bullpen? I think it's going to be Duran most of the time. There are going to be times when they'd rather use him in the eighth inning and maybe Jorge Lopez or maybe somebody else uh, ends up getting saves as a result. But I think it'll be primarily, I think it'll be sort of like Sort of like Paul Seawald was in Seattle last year where Duran will probably get to 20 and maybe mm -hmm. even a little beyond, but he probably won't get to 30. All righty. After Jorge Lopez went CJ Abrams and Alex Verdugo. That's a nice little turn there. Some upside, some safety. Yeah. Uh, Luis First, I, I probably should have taken CJ Abrams with my first pick. I was thinking about it, but it just doesn't yeah. make sense for me at all. I've got India middle. I've got Tim Anderson, Tommy Edmonds. So just didn't really need him. I'm going to go ahead and take a uh, an injury stash, and I'm going to draft Trevor Story in the reserves here. Throw him on my IL. We have five spots there. Again, I don't know how necessary he'll be for this team, but you give me a little second-half boost. I could throw him at utility. Uh, if, I took him in, in Tout Wars. He is kind of like Harper, though, and where it sounds like you know he's, he's missing. He's more likely to miss two-thirds of the season than one-third of the season, and so that makes it obviously a fine pick in the reserve round, but... It, it does kind of take the appeal out of it. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally get that with uh, with Trevor Story. Showed some signs last year, but overall, a disappointment his first season in Boston. Brandon Hughes goes to RJ White. Josh Naylor, another just kind of boring pick, but I like it. You know, 250, 260, 20-plus home runs for Naylor. Andrew Benintendi, sounds like he could bat third consistently for the White Sox. So, you know, I have question marks about the power, but the counting stats could turn out to be pretty good for... For Andrew mm -hmm. I'm going to uh, take what I think is the last outfielder I like here, the, and that's Brian De La Cruz, mm -hmm. who I've cooled on from earlier because it sounds like they're leaning Jesus Sanchez to start and left, but I don't think that'll last. I think I think De La Cruz's talent is eventually going to force the issue. I will say Miami, there, there's some crowding issues now that they signed Yuli Gurriel, which they've been circling him for a while, but they did sign him today. Also, Jose Iglesias, I don't think he's going to ma matter much, but Yuli Gurriel, I'm guessing they signed him with an eye on starting him pretty regularly. So, you know, whether that means Luis Arias moves to third base, I don't know, but it's, uh, 
you know, between Garrett Cooper not being guaranteed the first base job or or DH every day, he might have to play some in the outfield. There's there's a little bit of crowding there in, in Miami with the outfield and DH spots now. It's a good point. I know it was a minor league contract, Chris. Are are yeah. you are you certain that Guriel will be on their roster on opening day? I'm pretty positive yeah. that he I mean, I know he was holding out for a major league deal and never got it. So, you know, maybe he ha- he pushes for his release if he's not guaranteed a starting spot, but I, I would think he's going to play more often than not. That is Yuli Guriel once again signing with the Miami Marlins. Other picks that went down. Wow. That guy went really late. Whit Merrifield in the third round yeah. of the reserves. That that's a really good pick. Uh, Volpe also went. Still a chance Volpe could be up on opening day. Uh, Curtis Mead with Tampa Bay. Good pick, Chris. I know there's been talks about the Rays um, giving Curtis Mead an extension. Yeah, they've been working on an extension with him apparently, which could probably accelerate his timetable. I was going to say that would basically buy out his 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 years, right? And then he- yeah, I mean they, that's what they did with Evan Longoria. They signed him to an extension, I think, before he made his debut. the The Phillies did it with Scott Kingery a few years ago. The Astros did it with John Singleton. These are not necessarily the best examples of players who worked out, <laughs> right? But they are play and and the service time stuff matters less now than it did back then. Uh, but there was yeah, I think it was Ken Rosenthal report either yesterday or today that they are strongly considering giving him a, a long term deal which, you know, presumably would clear a path to playing time. All right, a couple other picks here. Actually, that's Curtis Mead. After Curtis Mead, Jorge Soler, Noah Syndergaard, Spencer Turnbull, Patrick Wisdom, Luis Garcia of the Nationals, TJ Friedel, then Merrill Kelly. Got to get him, baby. Got to get him, Scott. I get it. Yeah, and I, I actually was really disappointed. Brandon Drury went a few picks later. I was hoping he'd make it to me. Um 308th player taken it's it's to, it's gotten to a point for me with drury i know he's not the one i took but it's gotten to a point for me where just like everybody's so out that yeah i'm kind of in by default because yep. like what if he's 80 percent as good as he was last year i think at a good hitters park good lineup he could be and then he's eligible at first second third um providing power stats very late which is hard to find i'm kind of you know i i, I really would have liked I, I can't complain about getting Merrill Kelly. I got two now, Miles Michaelis and Merrill Kelly, two of the Mount Rushmore, my favorite two of the Mount Rushmore in the reserve round. So that that makes me feel a lot better about my pitching staff, which was the most questionable part of my team. But I would have liked to have Drury too. Abraham Lincoln's always been my favorite of the Mount Rushmore guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, after Scott took Merrill Kelly, Edward Olivares, John Birdie, Brandon Drury, Carlos Carrasco. I took Trevor May, who I believe will get the first shot at saves for the A's. Lance McCullers, you could stash on your IL. Garrett Whitlock, Sir Anthony Dominguez, and Kyle Bradish. It's a nice little sleeper pick there. I know around the industry, he's gained some steam. Eno Saris likes him some uh, Kyle Bradish from the Orioles. I'm going to take one of my sleeper pitchers here with Ross Stripling. Now at the San Francisco Giants, through his changeup. A career high last year. I think it was 27%. It's a really, really good changeup. I, obviously, good ballpark to pitch in as well in uh, San Francisco. And it just goes really late. Pick 315 for Ross Stripling. So I like it. I like it a lot. Do you guys have a feel for the Phillies bullpen right now? Do you think it's Kimbrel to start? And if he falters, maybe they go Sir Anthony Dominguez after that? Uh, I think that what they're saying is a committee. Um, I think if Kimbrell looks right, though, he'll probably corral that job in short order. And if he doesn't, then it'll probably remain a committee with Dominguez at the front, but still a committee. Yeah, that's um, kind of like my views on our oldest Chapman. Craig Kimbrell, not quite as mercur- mercurial, but has not necessarily been at his best outside of the closers role. So I think like you get those guys you probably want to try them at closer first, at least. And if it doesn't work out, then you move on to someone else. But I think given the history of those kinds of pitchers, or oldest Chapman and Craig Kimbrell, I, w- I would guess they're going to get a, a, a real opportunity at the very least. After I took Ross Stripling, Jose Arquiti, Jock Peterson, I think is a great pick. He goes 
way late. Probably going to give you 25-ish home runs. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to play against right-handed pitching. We know he'll sit against some lefties. After that, Nolan Gorman, Ranger Suarez, Scotty on brand, Tyler Anderson. I almost got all four of the Mount Rushmore. I took Tyler Anderson, and then Martin Perez went to Garrett Atkins right afterward. By the way, the, the most Angels possible outcome today, apparently Tyler Anderson almost hit Mike Trout like oh. near the head during their uh, USA exhibition today. That would have been like the most Angels thing that could possibly have happened. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not great there. Uh, after Tyler Anderson, Perez went one pick later. Alec Thomas, somebody I was eyeing. I think that's uh, a really sneaky pick there for you, Chris. Marcus Thank Stroman. Uh, Stroman, I think, you know, kind of safe, boring guy. But again, the Cubs defense should be much better this year. Christopher Morrell, Randall Grichuk, who will start the season on the IL. You could stash him to start. Uh, and then Colton Wong at middle infielder. That is a great pick, Chris. Yeah, that's a little, that's a little tip of the cap to you, Frank. I like that. I, I, so I tweeted out earlier today that I finally put these pieces together. Will Smith signed with the Rangers over the weekend. Will Smith, the reliever. And he pitched with the Giants a couple of years ago when Bruce Bochy was the manager. Mm -hmm. He had a 34-save season with Bruce Bochy. And it all, it all just kind of clicked for me. I'm like, whoa, Will Smith is a really good like late-round flyer for saves right now. I love it. I think it's a good pick. Yeah, I mean, we don't know if Jose Leclerc is going to be the closer, but... Figure at this point in the draft, want to take a flyer on on that connection specifically that you mentioned. Yeah, I just haven't moved him up my rankings yet, so I just kind of out of sight, out of mind. But yep. I think it's a good pick. Zach Eflin I, also a sneaky one. Elvis Andrus and Aroldis Chapman. Scott, what would you like to say? I don't think Will Smith's actually going to be the closer. F W oh. I W. Oh, I that's a great pick too, Brandon. I don't Fox. think he's going to be either. Yeah, I saw I saw Dre Jamison go off, and I immediately typed in thought. Yep, he was Adam's near the top queue. of my queue. Yeah. Jeez. Well, broadcasting and drafting 101. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, man, I just completely forgot about him. That is a great pick. Uh, and now I am up, and I don't really have somebody I want, but I'm going to take this guy with another home run today. Uh, Josh Love. Very good pick, yeah. Yeah, very similar to your Alec Thomas pick, Chris. It's mm -hmm. former top prospect, kind of post-hype, very deep sleeper. Sounds like the Rays want him to win a job in the outfield. Um, and, you know, he's got a couple of home runs in the spring. We'll see what happens. Uh, after Brandon Fott went, Seth Brown, uh, Gene Segura, Brandon Belt, Yandy Diaz. And, oh, wait, I'm about to be back on the clock. So I should figure out what I want to do. Uh, I think I need another pitcher on my team. Uh, and these rankings are all kind of out of whack at this point. Well, and, yeah, the... The draft room doesn't put our pitchers in the right order because we don't rank pitchers. We rank SPs and RPs. So that's always a. Oh, man. That's not very nice draft room. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll take Hayden Wisness. All right. Good, good. I was, I've got a guy at the top of my queue. I'm sure I there's... know he's a Frank Stample guy, but I wanted to. Oh, who who I'm sure is it? An... I'm sure there's another good starter out there that I'm just not remembering. Oh, right. I don't know if he's good or not, but I know you like him. All right, well, yeah, he's probably not good then if I like him. <laughs> uh, after I took Josh Lowe, it was Segura, Belt, Yandy Diaz, Adam Duvall, a favorite of our our boy Neil Shaw, who was on the podcast the other day. I was debating Shintaro Fujinami. I like him too. Um, I think there's a little bit more volatility with Fujinami. The control is a real issue. Uh, I think the stuff is very good, better than Hayden Wesneski, but uh, I, I like Wesneski as well. I, I wound up with him in Enna Only Labor. One of my pitchers there as well. Uh, Steven Metz, can he ever stay healthy? Probably not. But the Cardinals routinely have a good defense. Um, and he pitches for a good team. So you know, why not at this point? Uh, Brett Beatty. Mm. Uh, there was yeah. talk earlier in spring training about Eduardo Escobar playing some left field. Uh, I think that's because the Mets kind of, I think they want Brett Beatty in the lineup. But, you know, they've got options for now. Yeah, some upside picks here between Beatty and Ian Anderson I think is worth drafting again. I, I I suspect he's the favorite to claim that fifth job for Atlanta and, of course, has upside. I'm going to go with my ace in the hole at catcher here since I spent a max, I spent a total of $2 at catcher, Mitch Garver. Nice. Uh, he should he should pick up the five games at catcher uh, to be eligible there because he's starting out utility only. 
He should pick it up by week three, I think. I'll be able to slot him there. And I do think he has a lot more upside offensively than Christian Bethencourt or even Travis Darno. Yeah, it's a good pick, Chris. So Rowanzi Contreras is the pitcher you wound up taking. I saw his name. I think him and Wisniewski are very similar. Um, but I took Wisniewski because he plays for the better team. So Sure. Yeah. Yeah, so, and Contreras... We still don't know what he is. He's a talented pitcher, but he hasn't actually been all that good when he's pitched at the major league level yet. Um, but, you know, I think he's close enough to figuring it out. I know he's been working on the changeup this spring that, uh, you know, it's worth the gamble here. A couple other picks going off the board. Nick Martinez, another one of my sleepers that I gave out recently. Tarek Skubel, Kyle Stowers, I think will be a strong, pl- a strong side platoon starter for the Orioles. Then uh, Mike Soroka and James Paxton. Chris, I believe this is your last pick. This is my last pick. I'm not sure which way to go here. I'm going to You're go running out with of time. Nolan make it, Jones. Make it good. Uh, didn't make it good. I don't know if it got in. Whatever, yep, it's it. in. There you go. <laughs> Nolan Jones, probably going to drop him. But, you know, he's got a chance. He's a recent prospect, top prospect-ish. A um, lot of swing and miss at the major league level, but more like a 25% strikeout rate guy. If he could be that at the major league level while playing half his games at Coors Field, I, I think there's, you know, definitely some potential there. Okay. Time to do it, Frank. I haven't done it in any league oh, yet, yeah. except maybe AL only. Michael Massey. I like there it. There you go. Michael Massey got to have got to have a share of him somewhere. Last pick in the reserve Gosh. rounds. I mean, I really never thought I would get upset about Domingo Herman going, but that is who I wanted. <laughs> he is gonna... <laughs> really last round of the reserves. And now I'm on the clock. I don't know. Well, Clark Schmidt went earlier, so you don't have that one to fall back on. I think this guy is still available. Let me see. Yes. Uh, so I will take Ken Waldachuk. I still wanted Domingo Herman. That sucks. Whatever. Um, all right, so some upside pitchers on the bench. I've got Ross Stripling, Ken Waldachuk, and Hayden Wisniewski. Justin Turner, and who's going to be the last one? Number 360, Mr. Irrelevant. Matt, Matt Mervis. Mervis. You know, the, it, it's, it. it's, it's, it's amazing how everybody's cooled on him. Like, even in the 15-team Roto Leagues, he, yeah. he drafted it all now. And he's had a bad spring, which doesn't help a lot of strikeouts, surprisingly. Uh, but he'll still be the Cubs. He'll still be in the Cubs lineup by May, June 1st, I presume. Yeah, potentially June. He went in the reserve rounds of my NL only labor. And I, I just completely whiffed. I forgot about him. And when he went, I was like, what was I thinking? I, I should have definitely wound up with Mervis, who was one of the most impressive hitters in the minors last year. Lots of power, lots of uh, batting average. I saw him out in the Arizona Fall League, and he was amazing. Put on a show, so... Uh, Lots of upside with uh, Matt Mervis' season. Uh, let's let's wrap up with Chris's team. Why don't we? Because we went through Scott's, we went through my team, and then Chris finished out his draft. So we'll we'll end there. We'll uh, we'll go through Chris's team, and then we'll wrap everything up. You got Salvador Perez and Cabert Ruiz at catcher. Reese Hoskins, Jorge Polanco, Spencer Steer, Bo Bichette, Adalber- Adalberto Mondesi, and Anthony Rendon as your infield. Mm-hmm. And in the outfield, you've got Nick Castellanos, George Springer, Mookie Betts, Randy Rosarena, Riley Green, and Fernando Tatis. I know you didn't really have a plan coming in, Chris, so I won't ask you about that. But how do you? Yeah, I mean, look, my my plan is stars and scrubs for the most part. I, I like when I say I don't go in with a plan. I don't go in with specific players that I want. Right. Different than specific players that I want in my normal drafts, but you know. I, I was I wanted to get, you know, as many star players as possible, knowing, like Scott has said, it's a 12 team league. You should be able to get some replacements. So, like, I took that flyer on Alberto Mondesi. He's not actually in my starting lineup. He's going to go on IL when the season starts. And maybe he comes back in May or June and is able to give me a little boost and steals if I need it. But Luis Garcia is going to start a middle infield for me. Fernando Tatis not going to start the season for me. He's suspended, obviously. But once he's back, like I think between Fernando Tatis, Mookie Betts, and Boba Shett, I probably will have three of the top 15 hitters, 20 hitters 
uh, by the time, you know, from the point that Fernando Tatis is active. And actually, I think he'll be one of the 15 best hitters in fantasy overall anyway. So, you know, I got the, the stars. I think I've mostly managed to avoid any major holes in my lineup. Uh, so I, I feel pretty good about it. Very nice. On the pitching side of things, you wound up with Justin Verlander, Chris Sale, Robbie Ray, Jamison Tyone, Trevor Rogers, and Josiah Gray as your starters. And then for the relievers, you've got Camilo Doval, Carlos Estevez, and Dylan Floro. Um, were you pleased with the top three, Chris? Justin Verlander, Chris Sale, and Robbie Ray. I know you said you like Robbie Ray a little bit more than we do, but mm -hmm. do you kind of wish maybe you had a better SP2 or SP3? Yeah, I mean, the problem was there weren't, in my opinion, at least in that $13 range, there weren't really many better players who went. Um, you know, I think like the pitchers who I have tiered with, uh, with Robbie Ray are guys like Kevin Gosman, Julio Arias, who all went for, you know, 19, 20, Zach Allen, I, I have in a similar range. Those guys all went for more than Robbie Ray. So there just weren't, really any alternatives that I could have gone with besides Robbie Ray. So I'm, I'm okay with getting Robbie Ray as my number two. Um, you know, Chris Sale, I'm obviously happy with as my number three. He's kind of my number, my default number three starting pitcher. I think he's going to pitch more like an SP two. So I'm very pleased with that. Scott, any parting words of wisdom, any thoughts on the, the auction or the, the reserve rounds or anything in, in general, as we wrap it up here. Well, I was just looking at uh, who remains, who wasn't taken, and I was looking at you know what I'm what am I most concerned about for my own roster, and uh, I don't have a backup at third base for Nolan Arenado. Hopefully, I don't need one. But you know who wasn't taken? <laughs> I know exactly who it is. And as soon as I took Walter Tuck, I was like, oh, I should have taken uh, it. Yeah, I'm thinking I should have taken this instead of Michael Massey. It's Christian Encarnacion Strand, mm, who, of course, yeah. is eligible at third base and a big source of power. If he makes the roster, it's still kind of a long shot, I guess. But it is something that is being talked up right now. Um, showed a lot of power in the minors last year, having a great spring. And there's a need with Joey Votto banked up to begin the year. Probably won't play third base for the Reds, but he maintains that eligibility. So I wish I had might be a little bit of a bidding war for him in the first run of fab. Yeah, but but but, but overall, I'm happy with the way it turned out. It's it's easy for me to get stuck on the negative. I, I I'm very happy with the way my draft turned out. I'm I'm certainly not lacking in speed or batting average. I kind of wonder if maybe I underdid it with the power despite having Aaron judge. I don't think so, <laughs> but I kind of wonder. So that, that I guess that's a good spot to be in if that's what I'm most worried about. And especially that I was able to get all of Merrill Kelly, miles, Michaelis and Tyler Anderson in the reserve rounds. Like I, I think, I think I'm going to have enough pitching uh, and yeah, really happy with the way it turned out. Scott, will these results be on the website? Yes, they will. All right, cbsports.com slash fantasy slash baseball. If you want to run through everybody's team and look at how much players went for and the reserve rounds and all that fun stuff, leave a comment on YouTube. Let us know who you think uh, won the salary cap draft, the auction here, and we're, we're looking forward to it. We're going to wrap there for Chris and Scott. I am Frank. Thank you all for listening and watching Fantasy Baseball today. We'll be back again tomorrow with a mailbag. Bye-bye.